Welcome everyone to Nippert Stadium on the Cincinnati campus. We are set for American Conference East Division action between Cincinnati and East Carolina. Ryan Jones kickoff man on homecoming set to kick off here to ECU. Cincinnati has won the opening toss deferred to the second half. Saying how Quay Johnson deep to receive underway. Critical American Conference game for each. Trying to get in the win column. And college football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Geico. East Carolina, four-game losing streak. Cincinnati winless in league play. Battle tonight under the lights at Nipper in a must win for each. Here comes East Carolina, led by the senior transfer, Philip Nelson. Started his career at Minnesota, transferred to Rutgers, never played there. Had a one-year starter at ECU. Battled injury problems. First play, option look. James Summers to carry. And it's time for the Chick-fil-A starting lineup. Lauren Philip Nelson knocked out of the last two Pirate games with a head injury. Coach Scotty Montgomery told us this week that the off week created by Hurricane Matthew gave him time to recover. So Nelson okay. And passing here to Quay Johnson. The first play of the game, Dave, you saw their offensive line had a factor in the run game. Brandon Smith, six foot eight, is an excellent run blocker. I think he's going to have a uh, I gotta watch most of the night against a pretty active UC front. First down to the game of seven. Quay Johnson on the reception again. The sideline row. Knocked out of bounds by Antonio Kennard. Johnson with the reception. On the outside, really, for Cincinnati, Alex Thomas. He's getting the start tonight. He's been coming on, I think, from an athletic perspective. He's as talented as any defensive back they have. They've intercepted the number of passes. He has three. And he can attack the ball in the air. Here's second down. Play action, pace, some pressure. Nelson gonna run. Philip Nelson thought about a slide, and Mike Tyson shoves him out of bounds. A nice pickup should be enough for an East Carolina first down. And a great start here for ECU. And you can see they get a little bit of push up front by number 99, Alex Pace, and then only fence he fits he loses the edge and that's what allows Nelson to get outside and run for basically the first down Great pass all everything back James Summers more than 100 rushing yards at USF in ECU's last game two weeks ago Gilbert, quarterback JC transfer he's done everything for East Carolina he touched the ball 30 times tonight Nelson, play fake. Muhan tracks him down, but a good pickup oh, again for Philip Nelson. Here. Slides to about the 40. First down here for East Carolina. He's doing a good job of reading. Muhan on the edge. He closes down just a bit. And that's an excellent decision by Nelson, who after the injuries, you're wondering, would he run the ball? He's doing it confidently thus far. First down. Time for Nelson. Behind Williams incomplete. Nelson was KO'd on a legal hit by Augie Sanchez two weeks ago in Tampa against USF. 17 to go in the third quarter. And replaced by Gardner Mitchell the week before on a hit by Mark Rucker, which was a targeting call. Nelson was knocked out against UCF. But passed all of his concussion protocol testing. Had a great week of practice back in the lineup. Second down, three-step drop. And the first catch of what East Carolina fans hope is many for Zay Jones, pick up a five. He's got 85 catches this year to lead the FBS. On pace to perhaps become the all-time leading receiver in FBS history. We'd like to see him on that play. If the ball is up, make the man miss on the outside and break a tackle. Now, he's got a one-on-one -on -one in the slot right here. 
Let's see if he takes advantage at the top of the screen. I'll throw it down. Nelson. Quick slant. And on. Incomplete. Coleman almost had the pick on the tip drill. A great opportunity for a couple of Bearcats to pick that off. Fourth down coming up. Well, they use Jones to run a pick route. They're going to bring him inside Jimmy Williams, created by the natural pick of Jones. And so you can see he's wide open. Pretty good angle by Antonio Kadar. Early roll of dice here for Scotty Montgomery. He's Carolina's head coach going for it. On fourth down, short field. Nelson throwing. Say Jones has it. And a first down shoved out of bounds by Grant Coleman. That was a good route. It was a, what, what a lot of people call a return pivot. And, and you'll see him come inside. And he has the corner thinking he's coming inside. Grant Coleman, watch him stop. And he's going to plant real hard off that inside foot back outside. And that's the one after the catch strength I like to see. Sweet. Jones, another touch. Knocked down. A bounce there by Kennard. So Zay Jones now is catching 42 straight games, fourth best active streak in the FBS. As he piles up incredible numbers trying to catch the great Justin Hardy, all-time leading receiver. As we check out the Verizon red zone, this Carolina so far this year really struggling. Not a good number. Second down, pitch, it's Summers. Lunging ahead. But there you go. If you want to get the ball in the end zone running. When you score it twice against NC State, as you can see, you're doing it against Cincinnati in this Bearcat defense. They're good in the red zone in terms of stopping you. You've got to run the football in the red zone. You got three more downs to do it. Give it back to Summers. Nelson is running. Stood up and sent backwards there by Aaron Wilson. Our leading tackler in the American Conference, almost 11 hits a game. We heard a lot about that NC State game and talking with this East Carolina staff this week. But when you don't run the football in the red zone, this stat right here comes up. You're talking about only 44.8% scoring percentage, period, in terms of touchdowns. Second down. Nelson, here comes some pressure. He throws. Johnson can't bring it in. Ray Johnson, intended receiver, it's incomplete with Tyrell Gilbert on coverage. You couldn't ask for a better matchup. One on one, they run the corner route. He's got the, he's got a pretty good throw on the money, and he just lets it get off his hands. And he beat Tyrell Gilbert, the safety, in a one on one matchup. Perfectly designed route that time, by offensive coordinator Tony Peterson. There's third down, three pass. Scott has it. And wrapped up short of the goal line. Edwards on the hit. Decision time coming up. Marquise Copeland and not a lot of hesitation. Scotty Montgomery wants three points. I think that's the only decision. And when you throw the ball three times at that part of the field, you lower your chances of scoring a touchdown. Here comes Davis Plowman. A transfer from Texas A&M. In and out of the lineup as the first kicker for East Carolina, but nails that one from 26 yards out for our first point of the night. For those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will conclude after the commercial break. We'll continue on CBS Sports Network. You can find CBS Sports Network by going to cbsportsnetwork.com slash channel finder. Play drive for East Carolina results in a 26 yard field goal for Davis Plowman. 3 0 Pirates lead the Bearcats. Welcome back, everyone. It's Cincy. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside Corey Chavis, former star defensive back at Vanderbilt. Joined on the field throughout the broadcast by Melanie Collins as well. And the big headline we're about to find out Cincinnati for the first time in 11 months will start Gunnar Keel at quarterback. Yeah, everybody's been wanting to know what would Gunnar do? Would he get that opportunity? The statistics have always been in place, but tonight it's about really i believe settling down and we'll get into him maybe maintaining an even kill no pun intended as we check your sofi keys to success well we've already seen east carolina in the red zone dave 
not capitalize. 16-play drive didn't capitalize on the opportunity. Why? Cincinnati's Bearcats defense pretty good in the red zone all year long. Keeping an even kill. Can you really get him a little bit flustered if you're East Carolina? Only got one quarterback sack all year. And will it be Zayday? We've already seen him be productive on third down. Breaking tackles, making the contested catches, maybe in the red zone, will get that red zone offense going. Caleb Pratt will kick off here for East Carolina. Mike Boone and Tion Green deep to receive for Cincinnati. And it's Boone from the two. Slight cut down by Chris Love on special teams. So, Chick fil A starting lineup for Cincinnati. It has been a long time. 329 days, 11 months since Gunnar Keel started a game at quarterback tonight. He returns. He's overcome personal and injury problems that almost caused him to leave the program. He missed the team's bowl trip to Hawaii last year. Back and neck injuries limited in spring ball. And in fall camp, struggled to beat out Hayden Moore in Ross Trail. He spent most of the year as the number three quarterback, but won the job back in the off week after they lost for Cincinnati two weeks ago at UConn. An amazing story. On first down, Deion Green. Tracked down by Terrell Richardson, but not after the yard pickup for Cincinnati. Some of the threats that he'll have on the outside. One player, Devin Gray. We've heard a lot about what they have lost at receiver. Well, he came into the mix from the junior college level, and he's averaging 15 yards a catch this season with over 440 yards. First down for the Bearcats and Keel throwing as a starter for the first time all year. Has Cole on a crossing route. Deion Pratt and Sutton slam around the bounds. Defensively for ECU, I'm really excited to see Terrell Richardson. He's an active performer. I mean, he's tied for the team lead in tackles. You see him walked out over the slot on this play. Very versatile linebacker. Got to feel good for Keel to complete that first pass. And the run on second and short results in another first down for Cincinnati. As Darren Green gets physical. Another kill. 50 career touchdown passes, second all time in Cincinnati history. Only two games played in all year until tonight. 11 attempts all season. Now is the starter facing some pressure. Sideline route, Gray brings it in. Got the number 21, Devin Gray. That was an impressive throw. He's got some pressure coming down the pipe. And he's going to see it, and he's still going to make a beeline throw to the outside right on the money. To that man we just mentioned, Devin Gray. Off to a great start, Mike Boone. Successful run. Damage Bailey, defensive end for ECU, brings him down. Gain of five. And Gunner Keel, this offense looking very good in his first start in almost a year. Boone navigates. Mike Boone on first down. Gets inside the 45 of the 43. It's a gain of four there for Mike Boone. Now, if the run game, Corey, is successful, and we watched, Melly and I, the Bearcats struggle mightily. We are two rushing yards two weeks ago at UConn. It's a different story if they can run well, well, it. Well, it struggled mightily because they threw it 56 times. We'll get into it more, but it struggles when you don't even try it. Cade Moore was the quarterback two weeks ago. Now it's Gunner's show again. Second down, play fake. Keel is throwing. Looks for Khalil Lewis, incomplete. Corey Sargent, the breakup. Great play defensively for East Carolina. And that's a welcome return for this defense, Sargent. You, you, you want to talk about a player, the most competitive defensive back when you talk to their defensive coordinator, Kenwick Thompson. Here's why. When the ball is in the air and it's a competitive 50-50 situation, you might as well count it for him. Gunner Keel looks very good early, Corey. I'm impressed. Met with him yesterday. He couldn't wait for tonight. Third down. Lewis again overthrown. And incomplete. On a short field, Tommy Tuberville, the fourth-year head coach at Cincinnati, has got a decision to make here. Well, listen, they, they've got it 
they've got the matchup he wants down there. He's going to get open, but watch the blitz. They're going to come inside. He gets a one-on-one, -on -one, a double move by Khalil Lewis against the guy we just talked about, the aggressive player, Sargent. He's open, and that blitz forced kill to miss the throw. Sam Geraci punter. Quay Johnson has the fair catch inside the 10. And East Carolina takes over. Gunner Keel's first drive. Up and down, great start. Ends up in a punt, though, for the Bearcats. Thirty-one touchdown passes for Gunner Keel back in 2014, a single-season Cincinnati record. But Melanie Collins has been out of the lineup now all season long. He returns. It's a big moment for him tonight. Dave, Cincinnati opened up the quarterback competition two weeks ago after the loss to UConn. And hey, Gunnar Keel, although extremely supportive of Hayden Moore and Ross Trail, has been doing anything in his power to get back on the field, even going so far as offering to play on special teams. Well, now he's won the starting job and said he was getting the mental reps all season, but finally he was able to pair that with physical reps the past two weeks, which have been difficult to get as a third string guy. And when, I, when we spoke to him yesterday, he told me the whole situation has made him feel humiliated, but he chose to use it positively and build a lot of character out of that humiliation and that's really humbled him and guys we'll see if he can add a much needed spark to this Bearcats offense. Mel they sure need it. No wins in conference yet. Nelson the offense take over here for East Carolina and the run play yields a couple for Summers on first down. Well you heard an important word humiliation and as an athlete that's something that you never want to have to internalize. Zay Jones ripped down by Edwards. Zach Edwards pulls Zay Jones backwards. Well, Edwards is a playmaker. You want to talk about instincts, beats the block of Stephen Baggett. And when he gets around that block, he says, I'm here with the purpose. My hamstring is healthy. The senior from Middletown, Ohio. Since he's third leading tackler, he's a good one. Third and nine, Nelson, time, delivers. Summers can't bring it in, incomplete. Kennard and Wilson uncovered for Cincinnati, and it's a very quick three and out for the Pirate offense. Got to be concerned if you're a Pirates fan that you're not seeing much in terms of balance early. Now, I know this offense prides itself on the ability to throw the football. Over 378 yards a game. But they've got to be able to establish some balance as we look at Worth Gregory. Gregory has improved in recent weeks. Releases from the goal line. Braden Beard back deep to receive for Cincinnati. Is hit right away. There's that man, Joe Carter. We asked the coaches about Joe Carter. You did this it, week on the conference call, it, didn't you? I said, that he, that Joe Carter, he's been earning playing time. I guess you just saw why. <laughs> College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Verizon. Join a better network because better matters. And by SoFi. Offering student loan refinancing, personal loans, and more to help you reach your goals. Uh, a great look at Fountain Square, among other sites of Cincinnati. And from Kentucky across the Ohio River to the great Queen City of Cincy. Here it's 3-0 East Carolina. Bearcats led by fourth-year head coach Tommy Tuberville. Looking for a four-straight bowl season. His quarterback, Gunnar Keel, hands off to Teon Green, and he's belted immediately. Tommy 2 0 all time against East Carolina's well, head coach. Well, well, Last two games, as he reminded us yesterday, have gone right down to the wire. Two years ago at Paul Brown Stadium by eight, and last year a field goal at the gun. Deion Green stopped by Sergeant Terrell Richardson. He got the ball there. He hit the 35 for a first down, gain of four. How does it going to look? What do you think, Corey? I think it's been it's representative like, of what Corey, you've seen most of his career. A little bit of ups, a little bit of downs. Down Inconsistent versus the blitz. Footwork and anticipation only okay. Arm strength impressive. Put on about 20 pounds of muscle, he told us yesterday in the offseason. Wants to play about 230 pounds. Third down. 
He's a big dude, all right. Throwing here for Graves. Got it. Stopped by Jordan Williams. Spot. Number 45. And they can move Gray around. They put him in motion. And watch this route. Another pivot route. Pivots away from Jordan Williams. And a decent throw that time by Kill. Anticipating him coming out of the break. Rick Louvier our referee tonight. And Brian Matorin and Drew George in the replay booth with us high above Nippert Stadium here. They're going to look at the spot. Look like a good catch there for Devin Gray. But the question is where the knee hits and where the ball is at that time. Right knee down, can't tell from that angle. They've got the ball spotted just shy of the 45 yard line. And so uh, I, I think that's about where his knee comes down and where the ball is at. They're checking a catch, Corey, here. And not so much the spot, we're told. Does he have complete control? Well, you, when know, he hits the ground? you know, I don't want to even get into this as many as we've had. I think he was lunging yeah. ahead. He had it, the elbow hit. He had good control, but was trying to get the first down. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, it, this is going both ways for us this year. It looks like the ground helps him finish this catch. You can see, I don't think that's a catch. Ball's I think, moving. Yeah, I don't think that, that he did not finish the process through the ground. I've had enough of those to know that's not one. And if they say it is, you know what I'll say. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> and I know what you'll say, too. Well, you agree with me sometimes. Sometimes you cut my hair. Most of the time, <laughs> we're on the same page, you and I. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's take another look now. Does he have a catch? Devin Gray, knee down, elbow down. When he comes completely to the ground, does he have control? And the answer is no. Yeah, I mean, uh, now if they say it's a catch, then ah, I, that's all I can say. <laughs> because that's kind of how I felt on some of them that we've gotten wrong. They looked exactly like that. Now, again, remember a couple weeks back, Nate Cole catches a touchdown against UConn. They may not be sitting at three and three coming into this game if they don't overturn that touchdown in the first half against UConn. So this team has been bitten by these types of reviews. That's a great point. Tell for a field goal instead and After lost a 9-0 lead in that game. The ball will be placed back on the 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Incomplete pass. So fourth and six from the 41 now. And Corey had it right. Did not have complete control. Scotty Montgomery, year one, head coach, former assistant for Dave Cutcliffe at Duke. And for Mike Tomlin, receivers coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL. Great resume. And a former star wide receiver in his playing days at Duke. Some time in the NFL at Denver. Sam Drayson comes on a punt, so twice Tommy Tuberville on a short field has fourth down and does not go for it. Well, Sam and wants to play the field position game. Well, Sam Drayson is good in this part of the field. They just haven't been able to down the ball. I mean, they've had it inside the five a couple times and haven't been able to down it. It's a great point against UConn. A couple times that happened. No trouble this time, though. Good job for Sam Drayson. Three nothing game. Check here with our Chick-fil-A fan cam. Those Bearcat fans are excited. Check the fans' reaction. Homecoming 2016 at Nippert Stadium on the UC campus. Love this setting, Corey. Oh, no, I thought, oh, I thought. The storage oh, stadium I come down, tucked into the campus. <laughs> and watch out, it's a giant Jenga game there. I love that with the Bearcat blocks. That's pretty cool. We were for homecoming last year. Uh, Way over UConn, but it was a pouring rain night, just driving rain all night. Beautiful for football here this evening. Slant, Isaiah Jones has got it. Tay Jones, a big pickup, his fifth catch of the night. As he climbs the ladder to the all-time reception record in FBS history. And this is kind of what I'm looking for from Tay Jones. Watch him break this first tackle almost by Zach in, in Edwards. And I, and I thought he had a chance to maybe break loose. First down. Not much for Williams, driven backwards. Zach Edwards this time sticks right to him. Second team of the game. Which one of the best in the 
Western Conference. As Corey talked about hamstring troubles have limited Zach Edwards this year. That's hurt Cincinnati. Healthy now. Second down. Nelson, deep ball for Jones. Way over thrown incomplete. Not close. So we talked a lot about Gunnar Keel. How is Phil Nelson look coming off back-to-back -back concussions? Well, that didn't look good. I mean, that was a chance for a touchdown. And excellent job by Jones selling the first portion of the route. He breaks it to the middle of the field. He's wide open. You've got to be able to put more touch. And that's a strength for Nelson. Touch down the field when you grade him. He just missed that throw. And that would have been a big play. It's the first time out of the first half, East Carolina. Scott Montgomery wants to think about this one. On a third and ten coming up for his Pirates. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. on that other pregame show, Adam and the gang will debate if the Patriots are the best team in the AFC. Also, the NFC is starting to look like the wild, wild west. All that plus the studio will check in with all the CBS game sites. The latest news prior to kickoff, such your NFL Sundays with tops only on CBS Sports Network. breaks free he's kind of led him to a spot as opposed to bringing him to the other side of the field where there wasn't anybody and that would have allowed Jones to run it down maybe to the other hash he threw it a little bit more on that edge and they weren't on the same page neither team has converted a third down yet on the timeout Nelson throws Jones catches Dropped by Wilson, but way shot of marker. He's Carolina to the 39, and very quickly, Scotty Montgomery sends the punt unit out again. Gain of seven. Good job by Wilson. You're one on one with a player that's nearing 90 catches on the season, and you get him on the ground. And that's a zone coverage, and a lot of times linebackers are asked to match slot receivers in zone coverages. He did an outstanding job. Worth Gregory. Kicks the beer. Makes one tackle and miss, and down he goes. Carter on special teams again is active. Hey, hey, hey. Got her kill so far. First start since November 28th of last year against East Carolina. Two for five, 18 yards, Corey. See some talent on that outline. And here's uh, not a bad throw. This next to play by Sorge. Now he missed on this one. The pressure got to him. He didn't put enough touch for Lewis. You can see the frustration. But that's kind of what you're going to get from Kill. He's going to take some shots. I've been impressed with the intermediate throws thus far. For him, it's all about having some feel of when the receivers are going to come out of their routes. His timing was off earlier in the year when he got in the game. Didn't play two weeks ago against UConn. Timing route on the wheel route there for Green. It's incomplete. Simmons on coverage for East Carolina. Catchable ball there for Teon Green. No, that's not on kill. I mean, you, you can't place it any better. You could have walked it out and handed it to him, and it's right through the hands of Green. You get the matchup against Richardson on the wheel route. You can't convert, and it's an incompletion for kill, but a perfect throw. Here's second down. Kill throws. Cole makes a catch. Belton yeah, 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 back. And Devon Sutton. A nice pickup though for Cincinnati. Nothing to play by Cam White. Kill, number one ranked high school prospect in the nation. Is senior year, Columbus, Indiana. And his story's been told many times. A huddle. <laughs> is this a huddle? <laughs> a one time LSU commit. Then to Notre Dame and the transfer. And Keel is split out. It's the Wild Bearcat look to Boone, who breaks a tackle. Mike Boone, strong run, stopped Mike by Devontae Boone. Perry. And on third and short, since he converts, gain a nine first down. What do you think of that look? Well, I like the call by yeah, offensive yeah, coordinator yeah, Zach Taylor. Yeah. And if I'm him, I continue to get the ball to Boone by all means necessary. If they're running the ball well, it's going to be a good night for the Bearcats. Not that time, though. Cam White helped draw the ball loose for a moment. Mike <laughs> Boone with the Gary. You got to like Cam White. Every time we watch him play, it's about one thing. Look at those eyes. That's a great shot. His eyes, as you see, it's like Dimitri McGill hobbling off the field. He's been injured, but 
Cam White's a player that watched 10 tackles against Central Florida a couple of weeks back. He plays active. Second and long. Keel throwing, three step drop. Gray, nice catch and the spin move to get away. Gavin Gray, nice pick up. Simmons finally wrestles him down. Gray, the move around Colby Gore, the freshman, that was impressive. Uh, you want to average 15 yards against, you got to do something after you catch it. Spins away from the contact, bye bye. And Gore's left trying to just corral him, and then Simmons has to help out. And that's what I like about Gray. It's not just about catching the ball and falling down, he's trying to score. Game 23, first down for the Bearcats. Call the motion man, play fake, then Keel. Now runs it, got a Keel, gets physical. Giannis Bowden. Uh, and Jordan Williams meet Gunnar Keel, get it for him. He's got to get down, I mean, he's got to be smarter. He's had these injury problems throughout his career. You don't want to take and drop your right shoulder into a player like Giannis Bowden. Been hurt a lot, twice in his career against Memphis. Last year, knocked unconscious by Chauncey Lanier. Boom. Gets around the off Mike Boone, physical, making tackles miss. And the run game impressive, unrecognizable from two weeks ago against UConn. It was last year, Chauncey Lanier was not ejected for targeting there. Gunner Kill was KO'd and hospitalized. Later rejoined the team on a separate flight home. Scary moment. And we asked Tommy Tuberville, Yesterday in our meeting, Corey, timeout called here by East Carolina. If Gunner really was the same last year after that, he said, no, he wasn't. Gunner said, probably the worst moment of my life getting KO'd like that, but I'm not going to look back in the past. How do you think that affected him? Well, I think it's affected him, and I think the year before against Memphis when he got knocked out of that game, a game we announced, I think that affected him. Think about it. Through that game, or going into that game, through the Ohio State game, his first four games of his career, 14 touchdown passes, only two interceptions. After that, the rest of the season, 17 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. In the game we did against Memphis, following that great Ohio State game, he only completed 41% of his passes. I believe it's affected the rest of his career. And I think if you take down the 50 to 24 touchdown ratio that we had our, our great graphics group, they put that stat up earlier with Gill, after that game against Ohio State, the first injury against Memphis, it's been like a 36 to 22 ratio. Which gunner are you going to get? That's the question. That was his first career start against Toledo. Tied a single game since he record. All-time American Conference record with six touchdown passes. In his first career start. Off the ECU timeout. Third down here. Keel to Cole. He's got the first down. Hey, Cole continues a big night here. Stopped by Colby Gore at the 14-yard line. First down for Cincinnati gain of 10. And that play right there was something you wouldn't normally see in terms of the patience. The, the pocket was a little bit cloudy. He was able to stand in, and he made a decisive throw in the middle of the field. This is a short throw, very accurate. You saw the red zone stats. Keo, end zone. DJ Daddy, touchdown. Cincinnati. Gunner Kill's first touchdown pass since November of 2015. Gunner is back. Well, here he goes. You get a corner route by the tight end, and there's a busted coverage. Terrell Richardson didn't run with him, and nobody was left, and, and Kill recognizes it and, and the emotion by kill <laughs> you, you got to be happy for the kid after sitting out so long josh pasley has the point after seven three game and gunner kill back in the saddle this was a nice throw to dj dowdy Excellent touch, and this is a gimme. You don't want to miss these, and as much as we've talked about it, look at that emotion. Uh, I think that says more than even a throw. Uh, he let a lot out after the touchdown, and he feels like that's, that's maybe long overdue. 51st career touchdown pass for Gunnar Keel, second all-time in Cincinnati history behind Gino Gadouli, legend here at UC. 
And we had a long sit down, along with Melanie yesterday, our great crew, maybe half an hour. Yeah. Talking to Gunnar about his feelings. He's become very spiritual. He is very blessed, he says, and humbled, as we talked about earlier, by the entire experience. This is at one time the number one rated high school player in the nation. Relegated to third string his senior year. <laughs> And now he's back. It's an amazing story. Well, I, I would use the word appreciation. You're talking about a player who's still an NFL prospect. So he understands that. And he understands along the way, if I can lead this team to a third consecutive bowl game under my resume, it's a part of my resume. Ryan Jones kicks off for Cincinnati. Chris Love on the return. Breaks one tackle, and muscles outside the 20-yard line. Gunner kill. First, Indiana. That was before LSU and Les Miles. Never played at either place. Enrolled at Notre Dame. One year as a redshirt. Never played there. And then the transfer to Cincinnati. In 2014, he was a huge star nationally. With more on Gunner, let's go back to Melanie. Thanks, Dave. Well, there's a whole new energy on this Cincinnati sideline after that Gunner kill touchdown pass. He led Cincy to a late game victory against ECU last season. A big reason why was because for the first time in his career, he read the patterns short to long and waited for the deeper ones to develop. We saw that there on that last drive. He was very patient that day, Melanie. No question about it. Sideline route and nearly a great catch by Williams. One handed effort. It's incomplete. Alex Thomas, a little trash talking with Jimmy Williams after the fact on coverage. Well, Jimmy Williams is averaging 23 and a half yards a catch. I talked about Alex Thomas before the game. You don't want to get behind in a trail position against Williams. Otherwise, you'll be looking at the 81 all the way to the end zone. You got to stay on top of Williams. He's their big play threat. Second down. It's Summers. Bottle up. Not much. Cortez Brock, Eric Wilson, Tyson on the pile there of the all everything back, James Summers. And to finish Melanie's point, Corey, really, Gunner kills a different guy at the end of last season, that win over East Carolina. Well, you know, the one thing that she said that's very important is that the short to long part, you've seen that so far tonight. The same strategy, big reason why it's worked so far. And the first Cincinnati 7, East Carolina 3. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. <laughs> college football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Geico. Hipper Stadium, Cincinnati campus. And Corey, our first quarter, number 15 minutes in the books. What do you think? I think it's been an evenly played game thus far. East Carolina, they've gotten some stuff going on the ground, but it's really mostly been Phillip Nelson and a little bit of James Summers. I, I, th I still think they need to involve the running game more. Uh, I think Cincinnati's had better balance thus far. 34 rushing yards between Nelson and Summers, each 17 in that first quarter for the Pirates. Third and ten to begin the second. And Nelson throwing. Catch for Zay Jones. Knocked down by Gilbert. Not before Zay Jones has his seventh catch of the game. He catches now for the second. And you've got somebody over the top that can break on the football, really executing a, somewhat of a double team, and he still makes a physical catch. Again, it's what? Williams spin move actually makes a tackler miss there. And brought down after a short gain by Chris Burr. Zay Jones entering play tonight. Needs 10.5 catches a game over the last six games, maybe seven to make a bowl. To set the all time FPS career catch record. That would be something. Marquis Coco to stop this time of Summers. And say averages 14 catches a game to lead the nation, so there's a pretty good chance he can surpass former East Carolina star Justin Hardy's all-time FPS run. Go down here. Scott feature back. Real route to Scott. Broken up. 
into the back there of Landon Brazil. On coverage down the sideline, punt time for East Carolina. Oh, look at the job by Brazil. Now he's aligned and runs up the field one on one. That's a defensive end. Now let's keep in mind you're going against maybe their fastest running back, and you're six foot five, 257 pounds running up the sideline, and that's why you see everybody on the sidelines congratulating him. They know that was an outstanding effort. Third part of the night for Worth Gregor of East Carolina. And Beard. Courageous. Fields it. Hit down. Shy of the 30 by Ratliff on special teams. Bearcats get it back with Gunner Keel when we return. Jabril Peppers making it happen. Peppers gets it. He will run and he'll score. And he'll go down to Jabril Peppers. With that speed, there's no chance for Rutgers. Boy, he can sure motor, can he? Yes, he can. Let's take a look at the Nissan Heisman Watch story. And Jabril Peppers, uh, Michigan won 41-8 today over Illinois. You just love his game. I do, and I, I think for him, it's going to be about making a splash play per week. Maybe it was a return, 58 return yards. We don't know. He does a little bit of everything. Another time for the inside college football. Get you up to date on the leading Heisman contenders and weigh in on who they think will take on the sports most coveted trophy. One play successful. Deion Green rumbles out to the 39. Gain of 11. And a first down for the Bearcats. Good block by Will Stewart inside the right guard to place at Ryan Lowe. First down, play fake. Pressure off the edge. Keel stands tall and throws incomplete. Beard, the intended receiver. Goes to the right guard, as you mentioned, filling in for Ryan Leahy, whose career may have ended with a health issue. The Bearcats just found out about this week. Just heartbreaking for the reigning American Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year. Gray has the catch in front of Sargent. Five out to the 44. Really All that he can do is watch now. Senior from right here in Cincinnati. Pro scouts just love him too. It's too bad to hear about his health problems. Wish he and his family the best. <laughs> Third down for Keel. Lost to Gray. Down the to catch the first down. Sergeant. It's another first down for Cincinnati. And a really good throw again for Gunnar Keel. Well, here he goes. He's going to come ahead with the corner route. And they can just see a mix up in coverage. And you're supposed to be able to get underneath that. Are you expecting some help underneath it if you're an inside cover? Route? Gain of 27. Drives the pile forward. And slips inside the 29 down about the 27. Gain of two there for Gray. Tommy Tuberville really wrestled with the decision to make Gunnar Keel the starting quarterback here tonight. But as Melanie said, outplayed both Hayden Moore and Ross Trail. The last week in practice earned the job. Teon Gray runs between the tackles. And sprints again. Needs the 19 for the first down. Five more yards. And this run game much more effective for Cincinnati. Hard to imagine just two rushing yards in their last game two weeks ago. And he's Their lowest since a bad loss in 06 against Ohio State. Minus four rushing yards. A run for about 60 tonight. Gray. Drops the slant. Timing really threw him off when Keel had trouble with the snap. Incomplete. Deshaun Burns. Not a great snap, a little bit low. And then the throw, a little bit out by the ankles of Gray who can. If he, if he catches that football, he might be off to the races. Poor job by Sargent giving up the inside. Josh Pasley to a 39-yard field goal. Field goal for Pasley. Josh Pasley, walk-on kicker from 39 yards out, replacing the injured Andrew Gantz out for the year with a hip muscle tear. That's blocked. Sutton falls on it. 
Or does he? Tries to. On a block kick. Well, Jacobs does a good job, Carter, of getting the laces around. That angle, it looked like the guy, number 10, Giannis bound and watch him get his mid up. I don't think so. I think it's number 69, Justin Brown, who actually blocked the kick. Devon Sutton tracking this ball down. You heard his coaches say, don't touch it, don't touch it, stay away from the ball. And the officials conferring. The field is that the ball was recovered by the defense, first down. From the one yard line of five. East Carolina. Big team on special, big play on special teams. Something that's plagued East Carolina all year, part of the four game losing streak. Miserable effort in that department, but not tonight. Field goal on a block field goal. Nelson for his end zone. Time, sideline route. Williams incomplete. Coming down by Ben Stevens. It's easy gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and I think Stevens got away with a little bit of an arm bar, but he stayed on top of Williams. Nelson handing off. Second down play for Scott. Gets across the five-yard line to about the six. Third down, coming up here, the gain of five. Tackle by Antonio Cano. Zane Jones come through here, Corey. Well, he's at the bottom of the screen. He hasn't been outside a lot. But he's now matched up one-on-one -on -one with Alex Thomas. Running it still. Powerful run for Scott. All depends on the spot needed the 11 and should have the first down. And I like the call by offensive coordinator Tony Peterson. Everybody's thinking throw, 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 and then all of a sudden you hit him on the inside run with Scott. They're doing pretty well early in this game. The ruling on the previous play is under further review. Okay, we'll head to the headset here. Let's find out why. Could be the spot on the run for Sky, which is reviewable. Some of those players, I think you're going to hear them say exactly that. This is the first down. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down. Correct, sir. Tommy Tuberville, he doesn't like it. Not at all. Chains move for East Carolina. That's a big first down. Backed up to their one off the block field goal. They got dancing at that left guard spot too, Dave. We were wondering about what McGinn play. He's playing left guard. First down, run again for Scott. Powers ahead. Anthony Anthony Scott down down Sixteen gain of four for Anthony Scott. Scott will gladly take four yard runs. The run game has struggled as well. Only fifth in the nation coming in, 137 rushing yards a game. Pitch play, Scott stays busy. Looks for some room to the edge. 
physical play, Gilbert. Wow. Yeah, very physical and play. Popper. <laughs> and they just run a little speed option. They read it. Watch Gilbert set up this hit. Wham! Whoa. He puts that left shoulder right on the ball and knocks it out of bounds. And if there's been a problem for Scott, it's been fumbles. You look through his two, he's had three fumbles and two lost. Lost two fumbles against NC State. And that, that's been the reason why he's been losing playing time in Summers. Team second leading rusher behind James Summers. The 11 thing backs in now. On third down and four. Nelson, time, delivers. Ferrier has the catch. Nestled down by Tyrell Gilbert, not before another first down for ECU. DeAndre Ferrier, true freshman from Orlando, pick up a 22. Well, they're going to do this and come down with the corner round. I think it's an excellent job of anticipation by Nelson. You can see he throws it right now. Before Gilbert can get out of his break. Sweet. Trevor. Zay Jones. Overwhelmed by Kennedy. Double pass complete to Zay Jones. Antonio Kennard. Antonio Kennard will stop the weird guy. Lost Kennard. seven. Kennard's right here. He, you're going to see his range. Watch what he does. He comes up, and then look at him retract back outside his steps. You're talking about a player six foot four with a wide tackling radius. Second long after the disastrous play. Ferrier has the catch. Wilson meets him immediately. That shot, the initial one is finished by the yard. So throw down to 11 coming up. And be careful if you Wilson and Ferrier. A little bit of talking, but they always catch the second guy. Wilson gave him a little bit of shove. Surprise, he may not have gotten that ball. Great pick on third down. Nelson to Summers. Hit right away by Wilson again. It's out to about the 47, maybe the 49. Cincinnati. Fourth down coming up. Oh, they're dropping eight in the coverage. And so the pressure is on to get the ball to your underneath check down options. And then you've got to make a tackle up here. And Wilson, he's one of the best in space. He proves it on the last snap. With Gregory, busy night. Parts the Brayden Beard. Has his teammates to stay clear of the ball. It's down inside the 20. Punt with Gregory. East Carolina cannot move the ball, so the Bearcats get it back. Tomorrow morning is a special edition of Thursday Night Football live from London as the New York Giants take on the LA Rams on NFL Network. What a way to start the day. 9.30 Eastern. Perfect. Yeah, I'll still get back to be able to catch most of that game. Gotta love it. <laughs> Gotta kill the offense back in the field. They got both running backs in the backfield. Tion Green and Mike Bourne. I believe I'd do this more. On first down. Green. Breaks free. Tion Green, physical. Giannis Powell finally makes the play after Deshaun Amos got steamrolled by Tion Green, gain of 18. Well, you're going to watch Deshaun Bond, and you can also watch Will Stewart. Look what he does. He's going to come off of their block inside and watch him cut back off of the block of Stewart, and then he runs right over Amos in the middle of the field. So it's Boone, the one-two punch. Big pick up again, Bowden. Finishes Mike off with Jordan Williams. Williams. Couldn't complete on the tackle there for East Carolina. <laughs> Boy, these two guys are now really going. Game of 11 for Green and Boone. Effective. They're the strength of your football team, particularly on offense. And you've got to get them the football. First down, play fake. Keel steps up. Deep ball. Incomplete with goal on coverage, looking there for Jerron Rollins, a true freshman from Miami. Melanie already mentioned 
They're going short to long with a difference for him. He's back to that DNA. Now all of a sudden he's not open, but he's going to take a shot anyway to Rollins with Gore and perfect coverage. That's the gunner kill DNA. He likes to take shots. Second down. Khalil Lewis has the catch, gets around Williams. Simmons and Kobe Gore finish him off, but Khalil Lewis evasive. Nice catch and run. Draymond Simmons on the top for the Pirates. Gain of seven. Lewis, third leading receiver. For UC entering the game tonight, 24 catches. They're down at three. Safety down here at the bottom on Devin Gray. And that's number eight, Bobby Fulk. Third down. Too tall there for Cole. And so good coverage incomplete. So again, a short field. And Tommy Tuberman was elected to punt the first two times in the situation. And stays true to four. Here comes Sam Teresi. Well, I'm not a big fan of just going for it even in when you're in plus territory other teams territory because you've got a punter like Geraci use him as a weapon to back them up I mean that's what Geraci is good at just down the ball South Florida and UConn what they weren't able to do it here's that drop punt Quay Johnson indicates four and makes a fair catch at the 15. So East Carolina in this defensive battle gets it back here against Tom and Tuberville and the Bearcats in defense on the field on the return. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Sonic. Fly on over for buy one, get one free boneless wings Monday through Thursday after 5 p.m. By Auto Trader. Find the perfect new used or certified pre owned car on Auto Trader. And by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Oh man, that looks good. Graders Ice Cream established in 1878. And we know Cincinnati you want to eat. It. <laughs> you love to eat. Two <laughs> gallon batches using French pot freezer. The strawberry chocolate chip, I'm told by our local crew, is the best flavor of Graders. Defense has. Been pretty great tonight for you, see. Yeah, they've been eating Zach Edwards, you see, and then Stevens with excellent coverage. Watch this shot. Tyrell Gilbert comes up and forces a fumble. And he got another good shot by Antonio Canard holding the edge. And defensive coordinator Robert Prunty, he's done an outstanding job with this unit. They're ultra aggressive. They force a lot of tackles for losses. They came into the game with 38. I mean, you can see by this graphic, four punts already. Other than that first 16 play drive, this offense has been a bit anemic. First down, Summers has some room. Second level, then some. Stopped by Zach Edwards. Yeah, first drive, here. Corey, the game starting at East like Carolina is over 15 or worse out of six drives. That's maybe one reason they've been punting a lot. Poor yeah, field position. Game, second down and two. Second and two. Summers stays active. And it's a first down. Kamani Fitz. Top number one. Involved in the stop. There for Cincinnati. But nine more yards for James Summers. Yeah, got for on the tackle. Two weeks ago against USF. His second career 100 yard rushing game. Ran for 114 against the Bulls. Play fake. And Nelson on the read keeps and scampers out of bounds. Get it for out of bounds. And I think you've got to do this. I mean, they, they're right now closing in on that 75 yard rushing mark. It, it may not be pretty, but you've got to be able to make the defense defend both the run and the pass. Second down, Summers, powerful run. Coleman Gilbert on the stop. James for Summers Cincinnati, with another first down. Keep in mind that Summers was a starting we quarterback for half the last season, America. splitting the duties at East Carolina with Blake Kemp. And when we talk to their offensive coaches, particularly Tony Peterson, talking about the bad level being where he wanted it to be, and how impressed he was that he maintained it for an entire game. First down. Summers stays busy and gets physical. Eric Wilson and pushes him backwards. 
Four Maybe that's a ball here. in to Cincinnati territory. Good job for the Bearcat. He's running in between the tackles, running behind JT Boyd. Eight yard Will game, dance. second and two. A gain of eight. Summers again. Looks for that marker. And looks to be about half a yard shy. James Summers, 220 pounds. Stopped there by Marquise Copeland for Cincinnati. He needs a break. Tap of that helmet. It Look, I got it They were moving at a fast pace. In fact, Cincinnati was having a little bit of problems getting lined up. Now, are you confident giving the ball back to Scott? Already putting it on the ground tonight. Third short pitch. It's Scott. The edge, the first down, and then some. Anthony Scott with the carry. Let's go to Brett Stover, an update in New York. Houston, SMU, what's happening? Well, the Mustangs jump out to a 21-zip lead at home. Ben Hicks finds Cortland Sutton, but moments ago, the number 11 Cougars get a touchdown throw from Greg Ward Jr., 21-7, guys. Brett, 10 of the last 12, but losses for U of H on the road. Williams, an intercepted by Alex Thomas. For Cincinnati, and the Bearcats take over. The sophomore has his fourth pick of the year. But there was a reason before the game I wanted to talk about Alex Thomas. He can go up and get the football like a wide receiver, and he just takes it from Jimmy Williams. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, Brent Stover, Houston Nut, Christian Fourier. We'll get you caught up on all these scores and highlights, including a recap of sixth ranked Texas AM and number one ranked Alabama seen on CBS. That's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Core of big headlines. Lamar Jackson already. Midway point of the season has the Louisville single season re responsible touchdown record already. He went crazy. Will Worth, a huge game for Navy, beat Memphis today. Will Worth, five touchdowns, ran for 201 and three TDs. Two of his three completions were for touchdowns at Alabama. There's a reason to rank number one, right? They are, and they're probably going to stay there for maybe the future because they play defense, they can run the football, they've got a quarterback who's calm for a freshman. Mr. Hurts can get it done, and Mr. Thomas can do it for Cincinnati. <laughs> Alex, another pick, four interceptions to lead the way. Cincinnati has 13 interceptions, tops in the FPS. It's Boone on first down. Well, Thomas, he's right here. And you're going to see that in the pre snap, it looks like it's man to man coverage. But watch what he does. He fools Philip Nelson. He bails and he beats Jimmy Williams, who's his best deep threat, to the spot. So he made it look like it was man-to-man -man and press, and then he actually runs to a spot and turns into the receiver, fooling Philip Nelson. Not bad for a sophomore. Mm. Second down. Do it again. Put a good shake. <laughs> Look at those. Oh, you get that hey, and, and getting by tacklers who are left in their tracks. Oh my goodness. I mean that that reminded me of having to try to tackle the Danny and Thomason. The square stance, jump cuts, you keep your base, and then you're able to go to a side and then reaccelerate and get back north south. Kid has a lot of talent. First down, Keyless throwing. Too tall, too tall there for Gray with fault on coverage incomplete. Better heels pass. Since that, he's not had a 100 yard rusher all league. year long for Tommy Tuberville. Closest, Tion Green had 98 in that loss in the stadium to USF a few weeks back. And Boone wears the same number that Danny and Thomas have wore at TCU. I love that comp, by the way. Five. I love that comparison. <laughs> that is. Made me think so much about LT and how great he was. Not fun for you trying to tackle him. <laughs> Bet. Oh, my goodness. Not at all. On second down, Boone stays busy. Andre Bailey has the tackle. It's a two-yard gain. And Boone got a ball coming up here for Cincinnati. Yeah, 310 pounds, Demondre Bailey, you know, he can do the two-gap and, and play two different gaps, but he's very athletic. He's a guy that can get up the field. You saw it against Virginia Tech. 
he, he's a player that I believe has everything you're looking for in terms of a five technique. Numbers for Bailey. And speaking of numbers, looks like Tommy Tuberville's in no hurry whatsoever here with three timeouts under a minute, letting the clock run. Not trying to put more points on the board at the end of the half. Third down, pump fake. Pressure from Perry. Boom. Screen. Boom. Out of moves. Mike Perry with a huge pickup. Amos finally knocks him out of bounds. Screen pass. Explosive for Cincinnati. Gain of 54. Oh, here he goes. He's going to sneak out over here. And then you're going to see the linemen all get down the field and lead the way. And hey, look, if that's not a lot of space, I don't know what is. Man. Keelon first down. Throws to Devin Gray. Knocked out of bounds by Terrell Richardson. 34 seconds to go in the first half, and all three timeouts left. So very quickly, it went from looking like UC was going to just go to the locker room up 7 3 to try and score a touchdown here. But well, they got Mike Boone involved. Green, the feature back here. Keel is thrown. Fade. Enzo Lewis. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Khalil Lewis. What a throw from Gunner Keel. Welcome back to the Bearcat lineup, Gunner. I guess the question is whether or not he got his foot down. And we'll get a good look at it. And you can see Keel the touch. And look at the placement. And Gordon never gets his head around. I think no question. He gets both feet down. Look at the placement. Just throwing him to a spot. What I like about Lewis, he never put his hands up, Dave, to give the defensive back an indicator. And that was very, very savvy for a young player. Pasley has the point after. And Gunner Keel cashing in with help from Boone. And the great TD catch from Khalil Lewis at the end of the half. Momentum changer, to say the least. Well, I like Zach Taylor, the offensive coordinator. I like the play call to start the drive off with the screen. A lot of times in those two-minute situations, a lot of NFL offensive coordinators, they like to start those two-minute drives off with the screen. Taylor, a former NFL offensive coordinator with the Miami Dolphins, you saw that NFL pedigree come out in that play call. And here's what we're talking about. You, you get out of Darius Ray makes a pretty good block. Look at Deshaun Bob running down the field. And boom, number three, effort by Amos. And that sets this up. You get a one-on-one -on -one shot against Gray on the outside with Lewis. Lewis, Gray, two players that seem to have a better chemistry after a couple of weeks of practice with Keel than they may have had earlier in the year when he got into the game against South Florida and looked a little bit out of sync. All-time record, 78 touchdown passes. Gino Gadouli, his name is in the ring of honor here at Cincinnati. Jones to kick off. Chris Love on the return. Not much room. Chris Love on the return. Dropped outside the 20. Tuesday night on CBS Sports Network. Dana Jacobson, Derek Torres, Swin Cash, Lisa Leslie sound off on the latest action and biggest issues in sports, including an interview with Warriors head coach Steve Kerr on the opening night of the NBA season. We need to talk Tuesday at 8 Eastern on the 24-hour home of All CBS Sports. Of the yard line, first out of 10, ECU. Summers, Nelson, the offense back in the field here. One timeout left and just 23 seconds. Trouble with the snap. Nelson has it. Jones stopped by Tyson right away. And Jones has nine the first half catches. If we got one timeout left. I, I don't know if that's a stat stuffer or what exactly that is out to prove, but I, I don't know about that one. Second down could be the last play of the half. It's Nelson. And scampers out of bounds. Nelson with the keeper running. Ending. 
the first half with a run of 10 yards. 14-3. Gunnar Keel, 12 of 21, 191 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no fumbles. Pretty impressive. Returning his first start in 11 months. And, and you know what? I, nothing to be that, that you wouldn't expect because Gunnar Keel has been productive statistically throughout his career. Thought he missed some passes. I thought he made the tough ones, and that's what he's kind of done throughout his career. I thought it was an impressive opening stanza for Kill. Gunnar Keel so emotional in our meeting with him yesterday. Teammates so supportive. Actually going to coaches at times during the struggle for Cincinnati. Look, you got to give Gunnar a chance. But Tommy Tuberville told them and Gunnar, you got to earn. Illinois Association. The number one quarterback, which he's Council. done. And we'll find out more from the head coach. Tommy Tuberville on the field with Melanie Collins. Thank you, Coach. Your offense as a whole has been very balanced tonight. What's the reason for the success of the running game so far? Well, we, we changed it up a little bit. Our blocking schemes were not as lateral. We're more vertical with our offensive linemen. That's helped a little bit. We've had a few bad throws, but other than that, we're doing good. I'm, the group I'm proud of is the defense. We gave up three points on opening drives. In the last five drives, we haven't given up hardly anything. So pretty balanced. We need to keep playing back on offense take advantage of what we got yeah well Gunnar Keel looks pretty solid in his first start of the season what's your assessment of his performance so far well I, I counted five bad throws he knows that when he comes to the sideline he, he's got to grip the ball a little better a little quicker on the quick throws he's not getting the laces but uh, he's fine he's a little bit nervous he did good the first half thank you coach appreciate it thanks Melody thanks coach Tuberville and the first half Cincinnati 14 and East Carolina 3 you're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. Watching the Verizon Halftime Report on CBS Sports Network. Welcome in for the Verizon Halftime Report. Brent Stilver, Houston Nutt, Christian Fourier. Coach, your thoughts so far in a 14-3 game? The defense of Cincinnati playing very well. After the first three points, they've done a good job of really stopping drives, getting a good interception by Alex Thomas, and also Gunnar Keel, his first game. Uh, he's back, but here's the interception I was talking about. Alex Thomas, good job here at the highest point. Good job of getting the ball back for the offense, and now, Watch Gunner. Gunner does a good job. He's so excited about playing. Yeah. Can't wait to play. Hadn't turned it over. Yeah, you know, it was over <laughs> 500 total yards in this game, but only 17 points. And Zay Jones for ECU, I mean, he averages 14 catches a game, only 9 for 52 right now. But ECU needs to find a way, which is crazy, to get him involved <laughs> more because he's really their only option. Uh, at 14-3 at the break. Last start tonight, going back to November 28th of last year, Gunnar Keel, 270 passing yards, a touchdown, and a very close win over East Carolina. Returns to the lineup tonight, 11 months later. An amazing story, and plays pretty well in the first half. Welcome back to Cincy, everyone. Dave Ryan alongside Corey Chavis. Rejoining the field by Melanie Collins in a moment. Numbers on Gunnar, 12 of 21, 191 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, no fumbles. Your evaluation of his play in the first half. Well, we, we mentioned him being even killed. It's important when you get back into the lineup. Can you maintain some type of composure? I think he's done that. Thought he missed some throws, which has kind of been on par with what you've seen from him throughout his career at times. But he's gotten some help. And one player he's gotten help from is Mike Boone. And for me, whenever you see Boone with the football, it's a good thing. And, and watch him getting downhill. Now watch his next move. He gets it. He cuts one step, lateral move, three yards, back north, south, behind his pass. And then let's get him involved in the passing game and take more pressure off of Kill. And when he's in the open field, bonus, boom, 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 because it could be a score. I like it, 100 all-purpose yards. You see 46 rushing yards. He's also caught that 54-yard screen. He's definitely been a difference maker. A Geico difference maker for good reason. That screenplay went for 54 yards, setting up the touchdown pass to Khalil Lewis and Zay Jones. Now, again, big stats. Nine catches, 52 yards, but no game break. No taking the top off the defense, stretching the defense. That's your big issue with Zay Jones, right? Oh, Rhino, what did we do? We, we, we sat down, me and you, yesterday. We watched mm -hmm. some film watched together. Watched some film. And we watched all of Zay Jones' catches that I had charted 
on tape. And a lot of them were excellent catches, excellent routes, a guy who can get open and make some tough grabs. Can he create after the catch? Can he extend the field for you? I think that's the next step in his development, becoming a more active player after the catch. Caleb Pratt kicks off for East Carolina, and boom, retreating seven yards deep in his end zone. Takes an A for a touchback, back down to the field. Here's Melanie Collins. Thanks, Dave. I just spoke with Coach Scotty Montgomery. He told me offensively he wants to see his guys get into more of a rhythm in certain parts of the field. They're going to move that run game up more to the line of scrimmage. Defensively, he wants to see them limit the explosive plays more, especially with the Cincinnati run game. He told me they need to play gap sound football. Yeah, gap sound football, Melanie. It's about what we talked about a second ago with Mike Boom. That whenever you've got an outside contain, you got to stay in that fourth position. And then if you have an inside gap, you've got to be able to hold it. The defensive linemen have been getting moved a little bit up front. I think Adarius Ray, Deshaun Bond, Will Stir, these guys have done a good job of moving them. Kill the offense, begin the second half. Boom, big pick up again, breaking tackles. Sutton just can't hang on to Mike Boone, who's so elusive Mike to Boone me and powerful. And he's over 50 rushing yards tonight, 50 plus for Tion Green. So that one two punch yeah, of Green and Boone, very effective right. for Tommy Tuberville already here. And he's looking to the sidelines, hey, give me the ball again. He's like, get me the football. I think he's been waiting, both him and Tion, to get the ball more. Second and short. Tion Green, first down of that zone. Crosses the 40. There is a flag down. First penalty flag of the night. Number 18, offense. Penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. Second down. Rick Lumiere, our referee tonight, tells us Tyler Codswell is the guilty party. It'll back up the Bearcats 10 from the spot of the foul. He's like an extra offensive lineman. They use him a lot on the edge, particularly when they're trying to run any of their runs that actually extend a little bit and give that running back a choice to cut either outside of his block or inside of it. So a lot of responsibility on Cogswell's shoulders. Second and 11. Lewis. Makes the catch in front of Corey Sargent. Went over the top and almost made a very athletic breakup. When you wait sometimes for these cornerbacks to take a chance. And in college football nowadays, I don't see a lot of this. A cornerback just flat out saying, guess what? I'm going to gamble and I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to take your lunch money. He, he came close on the last snap. Third down. Slant Lewis again staying busy. That's incomplete. Sergeant almost ripped that right from the hands of Khalil yeah, Lewis for a turnover. Instead, it's incomplete. So the Bearcats have got a punt. And watch this break by Sergeant. He gets his right hand inside of Lewis. He said, no, 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 you're not going to catch it. I'm going to rip it out. He almost picked that ball off his knee. He almost picked that ball off. Excellent effort by Corey Sargent. As you see, Tion Green going to the sidelines with an apparent injury. Favoring the left arm. Green, the senior from Sanford, Florida. Duracy punts it away. Quay Johnson avoids a teammate and makes the fair catch. So East Carolina entering plays. We saw him at. Stat a few moments ago, looking at Scotty Montgomery, top total offense, more than 500 yards a game in the American, but tonight, struggling. Well, this has to change. I mean, 44.8%, they're 0 for 1 tonight. And this is a team that has also struggled a little bit on third down. We saw them get, uh, you know, stopped a couple times in the first half on third down, 40%, they're 38% on the year. So those are two places you have to be successful at. First down for Nelson. Williams has the catch on the go route and nearly scoots into the end zone. Edwards makes the stop. Thomas initially on coverage on that sideline right. And what a throw and catch Nelson to Jimmy Williams. This car leads the American 378 passing yards a game. Big pickup. First down. Summers. Not much there. Right, right at the back of lineman Gary McGinn. Line of Brazil, Brazil makes a stop. 
So one thing Scotty Montgomery told us, okay. Corey, he and his staff and players, you know what talking about too, yeah, watch that NC that. State game, their last win, week two, and they saw that they were moving so much faster offensively. Picked up the pace, Nelson, open man, Williams, that is gonna be an East Carolina touchdown. Yeah, Beats Thomas. And ECU with the end zone for the first time tonight. That was pretty fast. Quick strike. And the cash in for the Pirates. Well, that's what they can do. And we're going to take a look at the bottom of the screen. Here's Jimmy Williams. And what he's going to do, he's going to run a post route. But they're going to bring Zay Jones in motion to kind of give them some cheese. And, and so they got everybody looking inside. And now you've got nobody back deep. You see the miscommunication. There are two guys wide open. Another guy is wide open at the bottom. Plowman has a PAT. 28 yard scoring connection. Philip Nelson and Jimmy Williams. He has his fourth TD catch of the season. All by himself. And ACU is right back in this game. East Carolina had only one explosive play, 20 plus yards in the first half. Two on that drive, both to Jimmy Williams. <laughs> And Williams burns the Cincy defense for the 28-yard touchdown. That's the same guy who had more than 170 receiving yards against Virginia Tech and two long touchdowns. Exactly. And, and that was something that we talked a little bit with our producer about yesterday, Jonathan Sigler. He said, tell me a little bit about Zay Jones. I said, hey, we're talking about Jimmy Williams. And guess what? The reason is, if you're going to change the field and avoid the red zone, who do you throw it to? You throw it to Jimmy Williams. He's the burner. Third best in the FBS, tops in the American for the pass attack, which was on display there a moment ago with Nelson and Williams. So a lot of good leadership there from Nelson getting pumped up with Summers in the commercial break. He is a team captain for ECU. Caleb Pratt kicks off. Boone will venture up. Mike Boone looks for room, breaks a tackle. Finds the sideline and bumped out of bounds. Right Take a look at tonight's quarterback profile brought to you by Sonic and match up these two QBs. I think both have had their moments. I think that you've seen a big mistake from Nelson. You haven't seen that yet from Gunnar Kill. I, I think the thing that Nelson realized on the last drive uh, is that if you're able to do just a little bit with Jones, you see how they brought him into speed motion. You're going to have some openings to the other guys. So even though Williams may be the guy that gets it, you get it to down the field, Jones is one of the best distractions in college football. Pretty good to have your distraction. The leading all-time receiver in the FBS, or at least active. He's something. Kill the offense back in the field. And on that route, Boone was not looking yet. That looked up. Miscommunication. Colby Gore closest to that one. Third quarter's been problematic for the Bearcats score. And as and that's one of those things that you could try to come back in the fourth where they've been almost even, but you can't not start the second half of games so silent. So emphatic. Was Tommy Tuberville in our meeting with him yesterday about that very thing? We must have a good start to the second half. Third quarter's been a nightmare. Second quarter here, or second down here rather, and the carry from Boone. Mike Boone with the carry. Drives the legs forward to about the 34. Sets up third down, gain of six there for Boone. It stays really busy. Richardson with the stop for the Pirates. Richardson on the tackle. Senior from Raleigh. Third down to four. Tied the team lead and tackles 35 for Terrell entering play tonight. Third down. Keel. Lewis has the catch in front of Sargent. Knocked down outside the 40 one. to about 42. The first down, Cincinnati. And for Keel, to just accepting that that's a good pass and that you're getting it going even with a seven yard completion. And that's easier said than done for him. Pump fake. First down. Pressure off the edge. Keel stays calm. Devin Ray. The check down. Gray, the big pickup. But Sean Amos finally finds him. Not before another big gainer for Cincinnati. Devin Gray can scoop. It seems like they have a pretty good chemistry, him and Kill. And you see him fake the screen to one side, and now they've got the crosser coming, and he puts a perfect pass on Gray to get yards after the catch. And you're right, when Gray gets in the open field, he's like a returner.
Calls in motion. Play fake to Boone. And Keel. Deep ball. Gray intended receiver. And Gore got tangled up a little bit. Well overthrown incomplete. Now what they're trying to do is they're trying to run a double move. You're going to see him curl up right here, and he almost makes Gore fall down. So he has an opportunity. Watch the double move. He stops, and bam, Gore is going to grab and just off target with the timing of Keel. The near big play. Second down. Saw Gray's numbers. Deion Green, the ball carrier. Giannis Bowden, bottom of the pile, makes the play on defense yeah, there for East Carolina. And I think that that last big play opportunity was an example of Keel just needing a little bit more reps. He likes Gray, but they need more reps. You see Gray to get the timing down. It seemed like they've been a little bit more on point than I would have expected, but, but they'll have to gain more as time goes on. Third six here for Cincinnati. Deion Green gets physical with Cam White and Giannis Belton. Lodging ahead, but he's at 21 for the first down, so well shy. And we'll see what Tommy Tuberville's got in mind here. Remember Andrew Gantz, an all time great kicker in Bearcat history, is out for the year with a leg injury. So Josh Pasley, his left footed kicker, will come in again here. Hey, look, at, look at Coach Tuberville on the sidelines, though. He's waving the fans. Go ahead and boo. Not worried about that. I'm going to call the game. Understanding that Pasley has had success. Think about it. He kicked three field goals against UConn. He's been effective from this distance. Let's see if he can knock one through after having one blocked. He's got it. And that's Toby's answer to the student section. You see, you got to have some faith in me, students. Three more for the Bearcats, 17-10 game. Welcome back to Nippert Stadium. Bearcats leading ECU by seven, and it's been a difficult few weeks for the ECU and Greenville communities. 28 of these Pirates football players had to evacuate due to Hurricane Matthew, but they've used the unexpected bye week to help out in the community and bond as a team, starting at a retirement home where they helped residents return to normalcy. Coach Montgomery told us this week they used some of the time to sit down as a team and watch back the NC State game and reward each other for big time plays that were made. He said seniors got in front of the team and spoke and they all went to see the movie The Magnificent Seven together. So really guys, the unexpected open date couldn't have come at a better time for a desperate reset. Such a great movie too with Denzel Washington. Have you seen it yet, Corey? I have. Absolutely been. fantastic. I know my brother's going to be asking me to go check that out, too. Great film. Chris Pratt. Chris Love on the return. He is dropped outside the 20 yard line. And I think to Melanie's point about one of the things that even though they went and watched the movie and had some other, that they're directing the football operations to Rail Smith and also Brian Overton. It talked a lot with Melanie about how they did a great job of getting everyone out and putting them back in their homes. So the operation allowed them to be able to have that time with the kids because their staff was all on the same page. Some of the players' homes were under eight feet of water in the tragic aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. Everyone's safe and sound now, though. ECU as a campus was closed for a while. Nelson pump fake, scampers, pocket collapses, and down he goes. Mark Wilson, first to get to him. It's all about keeping your contained lanes. You see how everybody's in, in accordance. And then that allows you to sneak back in here if you're Mark Wilson, because everybody kept their lanes. And that's what you want to do if you want to have a disciplined pass rush your defensive coordinator, Robert Plunkett. No gain, second and ten. Nelson. Hit by Wilson. It's a good tackle. And that's the thing you like about Eric Wilson. Now, I've seen sometimes at the point of attack where he's won all those battles, but again, in space, he gets players down. Ninth in the nation tackles per game. Eric Wilson entering play tonight, almost 11. And out in third down here. 
Three step drop. Ferrier has the catch, and Coleman shoves him out of bounds, but it will be an East Carolina first down. Good read by Nelson. He's one of those players that plays really fast. He saw the coverage. He saw that they were going to some type of zone. He knew the route combination, and he got the ball out of his hands. Big conversion. Numbers on Nelson. Time. As he throws, looking there for Zay Jones. With Tyson on coverage, it's incomplete. It's a pretty good pressure. Coleman. You mentioned Tyson. And I'll tell you what, they, they've done a good job of actually coming back and mixing in another young player, Christian Angulo. The freshman cornerback, he, he's actually. Summer is good, north south running. Goes ahead, gets to the 42. He's getting three there for James Summers. On the night for 54 yards, Cortez Broughton sprints off after making a good play on defense there for Cincinnati. So, East Carolina, another big third down conversion attempt here. Nelson delivers to Ferrier, who has the catch in front of Wilson. And we'll have an East Carolina first down. Bill no, Nelson easy. makes a big time throw. This guy started 16 <laughs> games at Minnesota in the Big Ten. He did, and, and they're operating at a fast pace and about to get another snap off. Summers. Pretty physical play there. Yeah, he he the get there by Kevin Muhan. Kevin Muhan on the top of the Bearcats. This is an important drive for Nelson. Seems like he's finally gotten into the rhythm that we've seen from him at times during the year. Second long. Nelson throws. Williams has the catch. Dragged down by Lyndon Stevens. Another good pickup, though, for Jimmy Williams, who's been a weapon tonight for East Carolina in this second half, gain of 13. That's a simple hitch route. Quick pass. He gets it out of his hands on time, and then you get seven yards after the catch. Basically, Stevens riding his back. It's a different looking ECU offense in the second half. Some adjustments made clearly from offensive coordinator Tony Peterson in his first year. Summers navigates, bounces off tacklers, and nailed there by Antonio Cunard with Edwards. Once Zach Edwards come up out of nowhere, he's got the force, and then Kamoni Fitz does a good job of holding the edge as well. Both of those players stopping anywhere for Summers to go. Ten play of the drive. Second down. Nelson flushed left. Philip Nelson on the move. Tyrell Gilbert. He's inside the. 25 yard line to about the 24. Chains move first down. Gain of 11 for East Carolina. Well, he has excellent mobility. I think that's often lost to it. Philip Nelson. Again, back in 2013, he ran for six touchdowns, over 360 yards rushing that season. First down. Anthony Scott runs between the tackles and lunges ahead, hit there by Wilson. And a forced fumble in the stadium against Houston. Cougars ranked number 11 in the nation. Struggling tonight at SMU, down 28 7 at the half. Scott stumbles on the cut there in front of Kamani Fitz. It's a gain of one. Surprised by that SMU score? Well, I mean, the, the one player, Cortland Sutton, he's a beast. For SMU, one of the tougher players in this conference to cover. He's had an impact. Ponies up 28-7 late in the third in that game. Here it's third down. Big play, ECU. Nelson, time, but delivers low there to Williams, incomplete. Pace the pressure, Cortez Broughton as well. Ball came out of his hand really low. I don't think that was tipped. And Scotty Montgomery is going to try for a field goal here with Davis Plowman. The plowman has to come through. 
I mean, you would think that these, this is a gimme, but not necessarily. Not with Brown. And so he's missed a field goal in every game this season. This is one that he needs to come through for the Pirates. From 37, splits the uprights. Got it. To make it 17-13, first coach Scotty Montgomery in year one in Greenville, North Carolina, leading the ECU program. Tomorrow, the NFL and CBS has a doubleheader. First, it's the battle for Ohio. Browns take on the Bengals here in Cincy. Then Tom Brady and the Patriots take on Antonio Brown and the Steelers. It all starts with J.B. Boomer, Tony Coach, and Bart on the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines. A 10-minute drive to PBS Paul Brown Stadium, home of the Bengals. Our CBS crew setting up today, getting ready. And the Catalan Steve Tasker, Steve Burwine on the call. Tomorrow on CBS. Do a great job. Here at 17-13, Crosstown at Nippert Stadium on the Cincinnati campus. East Carolina Corns made big adjustments. What's been happening here? Well, we'll get into it a little bit after the mm -hmm. kick, but uh, they, they still have to do a better job of finishing in the red zone. Get a bright kickoff man for the Pirates. Mike Boone will venture out. Flag down. Could come back. Look at the speed for Boone. Tip toes the sideline. Gonna win the race to the end zone, but it could come back because there's a flag down at the 16-yard line and another at the 39. <laughs> it would be a 100-yard return, but I doubt this is gonna stand. And they gotta quit holding on his returns because Boone is a threat to score from anywhere on the field. And this has to make Tommy Tuberville piping hot mad. It would have been Cincinnati's first kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Do you see what I mean, though? This is a player that's a game breaker. You got to find a way to get him to football. There are two fouls on the play. Both occurred during your return. The block number 49 of the receiving team. That penalty will be declined. Second foul is a holding foul during the return. Number 46 of the receiving team. That penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Would have been the fourth 100-yard kickoff return in Cincinnati history, but call back. Well, they're taking turns. I, I don't think that's the hold on Dowdy, number 81. That could be the hold. That could be one version of it. Here's another look. They could have gotten the hold there as well, but regardless, if you get Bull to step, you see... Tommy Tuberville, knowing that even without that potential hole, Boone might have won to the corner anyway. And that's probably one of the reasons why he's so upset. Boone's tired. Dynamic, explosive player for Cincinnati. Mike Boone has been a huge factor tonight. 54 receiving yards. He's run for 61 yards. And almost had a kickoff return there for 100 yards. I mean, he, he came into the game with 18 career runs of 20-plus yards. That included a 63-yarder, a 74-yarder. He's a game-breaker. Got to find a way for him to change the game. Deion Green starts this drive next to Keel. Pressure releases to Lewis. Stopped by Cam White and by Simmons. Keel, Keel keeping his head pretty well there under pressure. And he's been doing a fine job tonight. Uh, when you have the gimme throws, let me just go ahead and take those. He talked with us about that when we met with him. That being the added importance in Zach Taylor's offense. Spear right on second down. Lewis targeted again, makes the catch. Stopped by Sargent. Pick up though for Cincinnati will be a first down. Bearcat fans certainly clamoring, Corey, for Gunnar Keel to be the starter again. Getting impatient after the 0 3 start in conference play. So there's a pressure on Tuberville, his staff, to start winning games right now. Maybe Gunnar Keel is the answer. We'll see. First down, deep ball. DJ Dowdy, flag flies, covered by Williams on a up for grabs tight pass there. Well, let's work this one out. Flag on the field. 
Pass interference, number seven, defense. Penalty would be 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Well, one thing we've noticed is that he's going to go to DJ Dowdy. And this is a competitive play by Jordan Williams on the outside, but Williams got a little bit too much of the arm bar from Dowdy and kills going after their linebacker. First penalty of the game there. And what a play on defense. Deion Green, the ball Deion Green is smothered immediately by Sean James, the sophomore from Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's a loss of five. Well, James, he, he's over here to what you would call right outside the shade of the guard. And look at the move. He gets inside of Corey Cunningham, who has to get over one gap to block him and cut him off. And his quickness, they may need to get him more reps. <laughs> that was a heck of a play. Sure was. Second down, flag down, Green stop. Pharrell Richardson right in the face of Teon Green. And as soon as he had the pass, let's check out the marker. Underfield pass, complete to Teon Green, and there is a penalty flag on the field. Oh, I, I lined up and on the defense. Five yard penalty in the previous one. DCU second penalty. Awesome five yards, second down. Here's Keel. Khalil Lewis. It's a pretty good block there from Cole. Stop by Sergeant. Gain of five. Stop by Sergeant. I thought Tre Trevon Simmons did a good job of holding the edge, though. You give your inside out pursuit time to come help you out. And Corey Sargent, he was able to come and assist on the tackle because he held his outside edge and allowed the pursuit to come from the inside out. Big third down conversion try here for Cincinnati. Crowd really has been quiet and a lot more into this game in the first half. Pirates have made improvements. Looking for a third down stop here. How about a pick for Corey Sargent? Interception. Sergeant on the return, spun down inside the 35. There is a flag down. That's going to be, be pass interference against East Carolina and wipe out this pick. Big call. Number seven, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. It's Jordan Williams, second pass interference call of the drive. Well, Williams, I think he's up here, if I'm not mistaken. It's not, a, not around the ball. Let's see if that's where the foul occurs. And I would imagine that's the only place it could have occurred. Mm. I don't think that was him. No, I, I that was don't Terrell Richardson. Well, Williams isn't on the field. Number seven is well, not on the field. That's a strange call. That was against... And Scotty Montgomery's beside himself for good reason there. I didn't see any interference. All right, first down automatic anyway. For UC, they'll take a shot with Lewis. Hurst got it. Corey Lewis, a big pickup. And they got it on the double move. He's been jumping routes, and Kill notices. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give Lewis a chance on the double move at the bottom of the screen. Watch this move. He's going to start here, and he's going to go right here. And he reads it perfectly, Kill. You see the move, and he's jumping the slant, and he finds it a pretty good lap over the top to help out to save a touchdown by Simmons. 47-yard pickup. Tonight's red zone being brought to you by Verizon. Numbers for Cincinnati. Looking to cash in here. Keel passing. Lewis has a pass. Ends our touchdown, Cincinnati. His second TD catch of the night. And you got to give Gunner Kill credit for recognizing a new player in the game. Travis Phillips comes in the game, and we're going to test you right away. Number 14, Travis Phillips was not in the game previously. He comes in on that side of the field. We'll go right back over there. And that's a senior playing like one and making a senior like decision with Gunner Kill finding Khalil Lewis. Who's he, he's had a rhythm with him all night.
Wisely, the PAT. Nine catches, 111 yards, two touchdowns for Khalil Lewis. Gunner killed. The interception of Sergeant wiped out by the pass interference call. Lewis, two big catches on the drive, including a touchdown. Brent Stover in New York, Greg Ward Jr. trying to bring 11th ranked Houston back. Fires across to Tyler McCloskey. They trail SMU 28-14 in the third. Dave, Corey, and Melanie. Brent, thanks so much. So we'll see if Tom Herman and the Cougars can come back in that game. A second loss would basically end their chance, probably for the near six bowl, definitely for any shot at the college football playoff. Well, they got to hope Navy loses, right? The Navy yeah. hasn't lost yet. Beat Memphis in another exciting game you saw on CBS Sports Network today. Back-to-back -back wins for Navy against Houston and now the Memphis Tigers. And SMU trying for its first league win of the year. A huge upset in the Hilltop tonight. Ford Field against number 11 Houston. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to play Temple right now if I was anybody. Not after last night's win, that was impressive. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can run, you can run the football. <laughs> you can impose a lot of your mentality on the other team. Well, Armstead 210 rushing yards last night at the link. Temple beat USF. High scoring game. Jones kicks off. Love a deep man to receive here for ECU. Chris Love from the five. Eric Wilson on special teams makes the play. Well, you look at what we talked about earlier in the games, the flag on the field, red zone efficiency. I mean, ECU has still not been able to pack it in for six. I mean, and then keep an even kill. I think Gunner Kill has done that for the most part. He On that last drive, he recognized some of the personnel changes that they were making and took advantage. And then will it be Zayde? We're going to wait for this referee's call and get back to it. We're going to talk a little bit about this Zay Jones. They're coming back on the field anyway. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 21 on the receiving team. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Ray Tillman. Yeah, tough. Bad penalty. And that was a tough one. But, again, going back to Zay, I, earlier I called out, I, I was waiting to see who was covering him. And I even called out a guy who hadn't played all year really for Cincinnati and Christian Angulo, but it was Mike Tyson. And the reason we haven't called out Mike Tyson's name, because he's been covering and matching up a little bit with Jones in the slot, and Tyson is one heck of a player. Now to the offense. Scott a burst. And a first down run for Anthony Scott, his best of the night. Anthony Scott carries the ball. Zach Edwards gained a 12. And I think Scott is a player that you can see the block. He's going to cut right over of that block inside. Now, JT Boyd doesn't get it. gets a pretty good block. And you're looking, hoping that Garrett McGinn would get one for him, too. Or Christian McGinn. First down. Scott again at the end of the third quarter. Muhan, bottom of the pile, made the play there on defense for Cincinnati. Could be a oh, ways Carolina goes. Maybe not the last play of the third. Gain of five there for Scott. Sticking with the run, important for ECU. That's it, four, three quarters. Cincinnati leads East Carolina, looking for its first American Conference win of the year, 24-13, three quarters complete. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. Our Bud Light game summary. Corey, what do you see here, key numbers? Well, I think the yards per play for Cincinnati, that indicates to me that they're having success on first down. A couple of long drives for ECU, 10-plus plays, haven't resulted in many points, only six a couple times now. So that's a little bit disappointing. All right, Gunner Kill, 305 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Almost had the interception of Corey Sargent, but a penalty on East Carolina really turned the game around because Cincinnati kept the ball and cashed in on another touchdown. Well, he's taking advantage. I mean, no doubt about it. And when you watch him tonight, here's the touch. He got the tight end involved much. They had a coverage bust. He finds the matchup over Terrell Richardson here. He has a touch in the back of the end zone to Khalil Lewis. Another pass to Lewis. That on a double move. Sargent trying to jump around. Here's a quick slam. 
you're going to bring in maybe your fifth best corner, Travis Phillips. I'll find him. If we're going to kill your senior, this is what the coaches expect from him. Zach Taylor, their offensive coordinator, has to be happy with how he's maintained what they've asked him to do within the offense on the shorter throws to set up the longer ones. Okay, East Carolina Nelson answered. Second down, beginning the fourth quarter. Punishing run there for Anthony Scott. Got outside the 30, needs the 33 for the first down. Summers back in here. Gain of two for Scott. Well, now it's third and five, and if you're looking for the money guy, here he goes. This is down at the bottom of the screen. Zay Jones, is he going to show up now? Been really quiet second half. There he is on the slant, has the catch, has the first down. Stopped by Zach Edwards. Tenth catch of the night for Zay Jones. Well, you want to give him some credit. Look at the inside release, and I like the way he did a good job. After he got vertical, he gave his body and shielded the cornerback away, Alex Thomas. Difference making play there. Summers, another one for ECU. Rumbles to the second level, and then some stopped by Coleman Thomas. Big pickup for East Carolina into Bearcat territory. Look at Messiah Rice, though. Look at that block that he makes. He clears it up. He, he really squeezes off of his block and gets back vertical, and he got excited. I don't know if we got a reaction from Messiah Rice. That might have been as excited as I've seen him all year. Mark Wilson is hurt here, Corey, for Cincinnati. Junior from Hampton, Virginia, defensive end for the Bearcats. And a forced fumble, fumble recovery, and the win in the stadium victory bell over Miami of Ohio. In October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the fight to find a cure marches on. Join CBS Sports Network for the Automation Cure Bowl presented by Florida Hospital. Coming this December only on the 24 home of CBS Sports. Moments ago, Mark Wilson being helped off the field by Cincinnati trainers. Never a good sign when you leave the field and go right to your locker room for treatment, not coming to the sideline. So we'll try to get information on Mark's status as soon as possible from Melanie. We're also told by East Carolina officials that Corey Sargent was taken to the ECU locker room with an apparent left foot injury. Doubtful for his return. That's really bad news. First down. Pump fake. Nelson, Bales, come on, he fits. Tracks him down, along with Antonio Kennard. I was looking for a double move. You see the pump fake, and he sees it's not there, and then, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and take what they can give me, and Fitz falls back in to make a solid tackle. Second down. It's Summers, 220 pounds of power. He loves over tacklers like Alex Thomas. This is a former starting quarterback turning everything back <laughs> for East Carolina. That was powerful, gain of six. He was impressed with that run. He got behind his pads, which is what his coordinator was most impressed about with his performance against USF. Big third down. ECU needs points on this drive. Drop. And incomplete. Corey Johnson, intended receiver. Ohio State Brent, look at their defense, outstanding, only 13 points a game, third best in the FBS. And Mike Tyson is hurt here for Cincinnati. Just lost Mark Wilson, as you saw on this drive a few moments ago. You don't want to lose Tyson, too. I mean, there's been a defensive MVP with this football team, it's been Tyson. Breaking down the tackle, and looks like maybe he just got caught up a little bit with the turf, and he's limping off the field. And he made it sound like he might be okay. Tyson tied for second in the American Conference, entering play tonight with three interceptions. Now it's Thomas broke that tie with his fourth pick of the year. In the first half. Big fourth down play here as Tyson is helped off. East Carolina, a four-game losing streak coming in. They cannot afford to lose this game tonight if they're thinking about a bowl. 
Well, I, I really believe that at the number three position, you're going to have Zay Jones, and they're going to try to work him again. Now, you got three receivers at the top. He's the number three receiver inside, and I believe that they're going to go right back at him, but they're going to double-team him, Cincinnati, so you may have to go to your second option. ECU really needs this. Nelson, some pressure. Williams is open. Jimmy Williams, touchdown, East Carolina. 37 yards. What a fourth down conversion for the Pirates. And it's all about down here at the bottom. You get the press coverage from Alex Thomas, and then you're going to have Williams find a way to beat it. Now, let's see what he does. He falls down, and you cannot fall down in coverage if you're Alex Thomas. Now, this is Williams being physical. This is what he did to Virginia Tech's corners, ran the face on, and some of those guys in the three-catch, 179-yard, two-touchdown performance. You can see why Williams is the guy who changes field position for the Pirates. Going for two. Two touchdown catches for Williams, second half. Numbers for the Pirates on the two-point tries. Trying to make it a three-point game. Shovel play. Summers is stopped by Eric Thomas. Eric Wilson, excuse me. You see Scotty Montgomery happy because he knows that you got to read through the coverage. Philip Nelson finds his man and finds another score. It's the return of Gunnar Keel. First start in 11 months. Last time he was a starter. It was a 1916 Cincinnati win in the season finale in Greenville, North Carolina, last November 28th. Gave Cincy its seventh win of the year. ECU finished 5-7, and seven, and Ruffin McNeil was fired not long after. Ended his great run in Greenville. Scotty Montgomery took over. The Pirates are able to make a bowl last year. Last two games between these two teams are going down to the last moments. Andrew Gantz game winning field goals for Cincinnati. Pirates have got to respond here. Get a stop. Pratt kicks off. Mike Boone. Fault helps run him out of bounds. Back to New York. Another update in the studio. Here is Brett Stover. Great game there in the SEC. Since Ed Orgeron took over for Les Miles, 2-0 to the Tigers, ranked again, relevant again. It's really an amazing story. He rescues programs. USC, now LSU. <laughs> Former head coach at Ole Miss, by the way. Keel, the sprint right, and throws low to Cole. It's incomplete. Colby Gorn covers. <laughs> I don't know that I would get away from running the football a little bit more. And it's an excellent night, and, and it's, a lot of it's been set up by some of what they've been able to do in terms of establishing some balance with the run game. Well, a QT on green, feature back. Has a bit of carry. Steve Wolf tacklers. Sutton brought him down. Well, not after he, after he just got absolutely pummeled head to head with some contact there. And Bailey is shaken up for East Carolina again at 10. Good job by Corey Cunningham, number 71. He does a good job of kicking out Justin Brown. And you see that just an <laughs> unbelievable hole. And then he's able to run behind his pads. And Sutton's only a freshman. And that's a tough man to tackle at 230 pounds. And you're not too far out of high school. 6'5", 310-pound junior, Dabaje Bailey from Clayton, North Carolina. He is very slow to come off the field. Under his own power, but pretty wobbly. We hope he's all right. I talked about his ability to be able to play that five-technique position in a three-man front. That five-technique is right over the tackle, and you can play either inside of him if the run goes inside or outside if it goes outside. That's what you're asked to do in terms of your gap control. And he does it pretty well. Doesn't make a lot of plays, but he can hold the point of attack. 
Looks like you want to come right back in the game. <laughs> and it probably happened. His position coach said, get, get treatment first. Make sure you're okay. <laughs> first down. Mike Boone back in. Terrell Richardson finds him. It's not easy to bring Mike Boone, Mike Boone down. Injury is a problem for each side. Let's go back on the field. Here's Melanie. Thanks, Dave. Just an update on the Cincinnati linebacker Mike Tyson. Trainers were evaluating his right ankle. He was limping and having some trouble putting weight on it, but he had it retaped. I just saw him take a run down the sideline. He shook his head at the trainer. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to go. His return is questionable. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks for that. They got to have him in the game, particularly if they're going to come cover Jones in the slot one on one. Second and short. Keely offense in control for now. Deion Green physical again. Knocking tackles. Von Sutton just gets sent back about three more yards. Back to New York. Another update. Here's Brent Stover. Got a game in Happy Valley there, Brent, no question about it. Four game losing streak to Ohio State in a long time since Penn State was relevant against top five teams. And yes, Melanie, a happy Valley alum. Penn State grad. That's too high there for Devin Gray. And incomplete with Phillips on coverage. She's a fan of Trace McSorley. She thinks he can play. And I'll tell you what, he's, he's done well this year, but it's an example on the last play of a good job by Travis Phillips. Now, you, you come into the game for a guy like Corey Sargent. And you're getting tested by a senior quarterback with 53 career touchdown passes. And he's holding up in coverage. And he's probably going to get tested some more by kill. Jeff Squeak. Devin Gray has the rock and a stop. Dayon Pratt. Devin Gray, team's third leading tackler. We asked. Kenwick Thompson, defensive corner this week, who the MVP of the midseason has been. He said, without question, my side of the ball and stay on Pratt. Number one in white has just been spectacular. He comes to practice every day. Wouldn't know if the team was 0-6 or 6-0. Pro seven. attitude in terms of practice and its approach to football. Well, they got one sack this year. They need him to bring some pressure and finally get another quarterback on the ground on this third down. It's hard to believe one sack last in the FBS in six games plus. Third down, Keel, sideline route. Lewis came back for it. With Colby Gore on coverage, incomplete, no flags down. And a big stop for East Carolina's defense. Forcing a punt. There's Mike Tyson. He wants to come back in. He's very emotional, Corey, right now. Well, he's an emotional player, and he puts it all on the line week in and week out. And I don't know the extent of that injury, but he's a leader for this football team. To Racy punting. Quay Johnson inside the 10. Back pedals, makes the fair catch. So East Carolina gets it back in a one score game. It's a must win for each in the American Conference. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chick fil A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. By Bud Light, raise one to right now. By GMC, we are professional grade. And by the General Insurance, get your anonymous online auto insurance quote now. Beautiful night in Cincinnati. Got a rolling suspension bridge connecting Ohio and Kentucky across the Ohio River. 24-19 game here. Philip Nelson looking to rally these Pirates once again, Corey. Well, who's he going after? He's going after number 10, Alex Thomas. That's the first one. Here's another one after Thomas again. Nobody in the middle of the field to help, and he's going after him with Jimmy Williams. Here's Thomas again. Mike's on the double move, and then you've got, well, actually, he just got beaten on the line of scrimmage, and if you look at the comparison between these two quarterbacks, I think Nelson has been efficient and fought through some early game struggles. Now, late in the game, Keel has had some big plays, but Nelson has the ball back. Pirates' big defensive stop. Nelson keeps off that fake to Scott, and is dropped by Tyrell Gilbert with help from Kevin Muhan. 
He also said the extra time that he had, Corey, after the Navy game was postponed by Hurricane Matthew, really helped him get ready. Would have been ready probably for that Navy game after the head injury. He's looked really good tonight. Whistles and flags. Prior to the ball being snapped, we were paged by replay that play is under further review. No flag, replay instead. Let's see exactly what this replay is going to involve. I, I don't see where, what, what, what are, they, are they replaying the spot or the foul? I mean, excuse me, not the foul, but the, where, where the ball is at or what? There was some contact helmet to helmet there at the end of the run from Antonio Canard. Let's take a look here. I, I don't see how you can, no, I mean. No, he, he did lead there with a crown. That's the definition of one of them uh, for targeting. Now, targeting new rule this year can be added if it was not called live on the field by the officials, and it was not called but he's a runner, by the I officials mean, on the field. He's not, he didn't give himself up as a runner there. He was still running. It wasn't like he was. He was not in a defensive it, position. Exactly. I mean, so I, I don't understand that one. Right, now, now that, if that's going to be targeting, I, I'm going to have to disagree with that call. Because there's no way he knows where, and again, you know, the crown, defenseless. I, I want to circle that word in this case here, defenseless. He's running the football. So you don't know where his head, I mean, just that's just football. Just a good hit by Gennaro. I do not believe that this is a targeting call. And if they call that targeting for somebody who's running the football, I'm starting to kind of try to figure out what, what the rule applies to, and they're, they're making it more difficult week by week. Now, if he was sliding and that had occurred, and I'm saying giving himself up as a runner, then I would say that the targeting is valid. But because he was not, he was still trying to get extra yard, and he was not defenseless in a defenseless position, I don't understand After that. review, number 42, targeting on the defense. That'll be 15-yard penalty from where the game play ended. Number 42 is disqualified from the remainder of the game. First down. And the first half of next week's game at Temple, which we'll have for you on CBS Sports Network, that is a huge call against Antonio <laughs> Kennard, a tack-on targeting call, which is new this year to college football rules. It can be added after the fact if the on-field officials don't call it live, which they didn't. The booth can add targeting, and that's what happened to Kennard. Ejected for this game, the rest of this one, and the first half of next week's game in Philly against Temple. Big call. It's got of the pitch. Knocked out of bounds there by Lyndon Stevens. So Mike Tyson, outstanding nickelback and linebacker for Cincinnati. Already lost due to injury. We saw that. Canards heading to the locker room. His game done for tonight. In the first half of next week. Second down. Zay Jones finally has another catch. 11th of the game, just second of the second half. Stopped by Thomas. Well, it's unfortunate for this Cincinnati defense that they lose Mike Tyson, arguably their best defensive player, and a player in Antonio Kennard who's had a good night. You lose him to a questionable, questionable call. Scott, powerful run. On third down, does have the first down for East Carolina. Gets across the 40 to about the 43. It's a big play stopped by Perry Young. Perry Young on the top of the Bearcat. I think ECU has done a good job of continuing to run the football. Almost 200 yards rushing in this game. First down. Cortez Broughton overwhelms James Summers. That was an impressive play. Took out two Pirates at once. Are you wondering? Know when he would show up, and he just kind of runs through the block of number 77. Will dance, gets over the top, and you would expect a lot more of that from Broughton, who's been rather quiet here this evening. Loss of three, second and 13. Nelson chased from the pocket by Cortez Broughton, throws in the move. Ferrier can't make the catch. 
juggle with a flag down. Tyrell Gilbert has an interception, but there is a marker down. Let's see. Yeah, get it. Number four, Zach Edwards, I believe, for a pass interference. The call's not going Cincinnati's way. Holding on an eligible receiver, number nine, defense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. Downfield offensive holding against Lyndon Stevens of Cincinnati, and no pick for Gilbert. You can see Nelson leaving the pocket, and that's the call they're getting in that area. I thought it might have been on Edwards, but that was actually Stevens. That took away a pick, and that, that was a game-changing type play. The ball goes off of Farrier's hands. Athletic play there for Tyrell Gilbert. It looked like he was in bounds and completed the catch to the ground, but it doesn't matter. Only call on Stevens, automatic first down at midfield. Well, and the yard line. Two and Pirates. Nelson hands to Summers. James Summers, big pickup. Rumbling ahead. Dropped by Perry on a gain of 13. Well, you're going to see him come in and he's going to go back out this way and get back vertical. I, I think that Summers is learning more and more about the running back position and how to set up his blockers. Got 85 rushing yards tonight. Timeout called by Cincinnati here. First timeout. 7.32 to go. Cincinnati. In the fourth this will quarter. Be a 30 second timeout. You can see Scotty Montgomery. He, he can feel his team gaining confidence. The penalties going their way and their offensive line beginning to make its presence felt in the football game. When you run the football, it's different than throwing it. Because when you run the football, you really begin to let the other team know we're going to take the game. And I think that's a big difference. Coming up next, join us for a late night Mountain West showdown between the Bulldogs of Fresno State and Utah State right here on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell standing by in Logan, Utah. Beautiful Cash Valley. Jason Virgil, we saw him last year play pretty well for Fresno State in the first half against Utah. He will face Kent Myers tonight. Yeah, I think his athleticism is something that has been a welcome addition to their football team. First down again. Now, ECU has run the ball 19 times on first down and only thrown it 14, a departure from the past. Off the Cincinnati timeout. Summers, a little trouble there with the exchange. One turns nothing into something. Big pickup again for James Summers. Zach Edwards makes the play. 10 yard pickup. And Summers nears 100 rushing yards tonight. You see him set up the blocks again. And then he cuts it back inside and. Well, that's a drag down tackle by Zach Edwards. It needs to be because Summers is finding a rhythm. Scott in now is the feature back. Pump fake. Nelson looks for Williams incomplete with Thomas on coverage. And I'm not going to be over there too. And I, excuse me, Dave, I'm not going to be taking chances throwing double moves with the way Summers is running the ball. It's the fourth quarter. First and ten, you run the ball 20 times on first down with success. Keep running it. Make them stop it as opposed to taking a shot. Now a second and ten and a passing down again. How many on that? Nelson pitching to Scott here. Looks for the corner, has it. Anthony Scott pick pickup. Thomas makes the play. The ball came out at the end. Could it be another Anthony Scott fumble? Bearcats think they've got it. Officials agree. Turnover. And Alex Thomas is still shaking up. He's definitely not down. And I think Kevin Muhan is going to be really injured on this play. He's the one who forced the fumble. I don't know exactly what happened to Muhan, but watch number 48 come in here right there. His knee hit the ball when Scott had two hands on it, looking to secure it, could not. You got two players down for UC. Yeah, Thomas as well is hurt. Wow. Muhan is up. That's some good news for Cincinnati. Timeout. Anthony Scott out of Virginia Beach. Six career rushing touchdowns, but unfortunately, Corey, the stat that he and his coaches are worried about fumbles. Got a couple tonight. Been a problem all year for Anthony Scott. 
And this is an alley hit. And that was similar to what you saw against NC State. And this is in the red zone. Now you got two hands on the ball. So that's a good job. And this is unfortunate, the knee on the ball as he's getting contacted from the side. And those are the kind that you don't ever want to make excuses for a young man, but he's trying. And unfortunately for him in that case, that I think the side, the, the, the lateral contact is what caused him to lose the ball and the knee on the ball. They have a great run of 11 yard pickup there. Yeah. Kevin Muhan forces the fumble. Eric Wilson recovers for Cincinnati. Alex Thomas a moment ago was helped off by UC trainers right to their locker room. So he and Mark Wilson are out. Antonio Canard was ejected for targeting. Muhan hurt in that last play too. Wow. It's been a rough physical game and a lot of players going down tonight. A lot of time left for East Carolina. First down here, Tion Green runs into trouble right away. It's a gain of one. Pirates have all three timeouts left. And Keel checked to that run at the line of scrimmage, recognizing their count and trying to attack that side. That's what you can get from him. That you may not get from some of the other quarterbacks on the roster with his experience. Melanie tells us Mark Wilson's shoulder injury return on certain for Cincinnati and Mike Tyson definitely out. Second down. Green has the catch to Al Richardson, drags him down from behind, gets to the 19. A very big third down play coming up here. Pick up a four. And this is the patience earlier in the game. Melanie talked about short to long a year ago in terms of his reads. And that's kind of what he did on that play because he understands the one thing you don't want to do right now is turn the ball over. So he's trying to need to stop. Some pressure from McGill. Passing complete for Cole. Flag flies though on Torrell Richardson. Honest Bowden was all over Gunner Cute that time. Here's a call from Rick Lumia. There is only no illegal block on the play. Fourth down. All right, no penalty. We've got to give defensive coordinator Kenwick Thompson a lot of credit. As you see, Tommy Tuberville, he's livid. Uh oh, now, wait a minute. Maybe too livid. Flags fly. Tommy Tuberville just went apoplectic on the officials. <laughs> and. <laughs> That cannot be good news when flags are flying near the bench here. Now, new rule in college football. Unsportsmanlike foul, charged to the head coach of the home team. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. That Just is his like first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. He is still going ballistic with the officials here. One more of those, he gets ejected. That's why Rick Lumier told us his first unsportsmanlike call. New rule this year. If you get two, you're out. Ejected like in basketball. This is where your associate head coach right now. He's got to be careful. Robert Prunty has to get him under control. I mean, that, that's the job of the associate head coach. You've got to be able to get him under control to prevent another call. False start apparently here. Boy, Cincinnati is just unraveling and moving backwards. Disaster. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 23 of the uh, offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And even better field position potentially for the Pirates here. That's Eric Wilson. That's your senior leader with 16, 17 tackles tonight. <laughs> Sam Gerace, he gets the kickoff. Gray Johnson indicates for a fair catch, makes it at midfield. This Carolina, great field position. Tommy Tuberville is still hot. Forty-six yard punt for Geraci. Back to the studio. An update. Brett Stover, what's happening, man? 
the SEC. Is the NBA great? It's mostly the SEC West. It's just amazing. Every team this week in the SEC West ranked except for Mississippi State. How about that? For good reason. Here's Summers in the game. Featured back. Gets the handoff from Nelson. And a drag backwards. Perry Young on a play. This is what Perry Tommy Tuberville was upset about. Oh, man, Carter. Yeah. Second out, Nelson, knocked down, and incomplete. Marquise Copeland elevates and deflected that pass. Third down coming up. Well, they've had a lot of energy from a couple of players. Not only Copeland, but Perry Young to play before. He's only a freshman. He's still in the game, Perry Young. They've even got some other young players in the game, number 30, Chris Murphy at the nickel. Are the young players on the field for Cincinnati who had to step up? Playing the game so far, third down for midfield. Nelson delivers to Williams. He's stopped there by Lennox Stevens, short. And the yards needed. And we'll see what Scotty Montgomery has in mind. It's a pickup of eight. Should be about fourth and two. What do you think, Corey? I think you got to go for it. Uh, I think that you got to give the ball to the guy that's been your best short yardage back, and that's James Summers. Now they're bringing in Stephen Baggett, number 86. And what they're going to probably do is run it to his side with Summers or a spread out away for Nelson on the short pass. They fake the sweep. Summers piling ahead, the second effort. I don't think he got there. Short by half a yard. And a Bearcat defense holds. Stop for Cincinnati. Our general play of the game, Corey. You give the ball to Summers. He's been able to get these all day. I think Fitz did an excellent job of creasing the gap. And then off the edge, Zach Edwards, the senior leaves. And look at Tommy Tuberville. Look at how far out he is. I mean, <laughs> I think that's what. He's almost to the hash mark there. I think the emotion you see, these are two teams battling for a bowl game. They know whoever loses this game is going to be in a tough position. And, you got to appreciate the fight for both teams that we've seen. And both coaches have been emotional, Scotty Montgomery, Tommy Tuberville, and both quarterbacks have played with a certain fervor that kind of accompanies the moment. 309 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks for Keel. They kept it on the ground mostly during the second half. Boone breaks a tackle. Simmons can't find him. Look at the run there for Boone. Finally stopped by Devon Sutton. Uh, Mike Boone picks up 14 more yards for the Bearcats. Uh, you Deion Pratt, you got to find a way to stay in position to make that tackle. And that was a key miss because you pick up another four downs. And now we're getting to the point where when do you start using your timeouts? And if you're ECU, you have all three. And if you're Cincinnati, you want to let the play clock run down if you're going to kill. 83 rushing yards for Boone and 71 for Tion Green in the game tonight. They have been major weapons for Cincinnati. Play fake and Keel keeps. Better Keel slides in front of Simmons. Nice pick up about seven there for Gunnar Keel. Here comes a timeout. Good read by Keel. Timeout called by ECU. Gunnar Keel and Cincinnati hoping to close this game out. Coming up next, join us for a late night Mountain West showdown between the Bulldogs at Fresno State and Utah State from Logan right here on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Aggies looking for their first league win, same for Fresno State in the Mountain West divisions, respectfully. Tommy Tuberville is still beside himself. 
has let his opinion be known tonight, Corey. He has, and if you're Scotty Montgomery, it's all about now, how do you manage these last two timeouts? Because you took the timeout on the second and four, but now if they get another first down, now you're possibly going to, you have to use up both of your timeouts and just have to hope for a stop, and you'll probably get the ball with about 40, 30 to 40 seconds left to go. So this is an important down. I believe if you're ECU, your defensive coordinator, Kim Thompson, you got to run blitz. You've got to go all out. I'm talking about 11 men on the line of scrimmage and just make them try to throw it over the top. You got to run blitz to try to create a tackle for loss. Second down. Boone has another first down for Cincinnati. Mike Boone out the middle. He's been a force tonight. Gain of five. I think you're kind of going to see my point. I'm just hobble a bit right here. I think, but let's get back to the, 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 I think right here you're going to kind of see what I was talking about. Now you call that timeout. You only got one left. They got four more downs. So now you're going to have to just let it play itself out, whereas opposed to if you go ahead and try to run blitz then on the last down, maybe even a down before that, try to create that tackle for loss. They were in a basic formation. They played zone coverage, and they only had five men in the box. We figured Scotty Montgomery, East Carolina, Tommy Tuberville in Cincinnati would play with a real sense of urgency tonight. As you talked about, pretty much a, a playoff game. It's an elimination game in that if ECU loses its fifth straight, chance of making a bowl almost impossible for Philip Nelson and the Pirates. And Cincinnati had not won a league game coming into tonight. Trying for win number four on the year. Must win time toward the end of October. And I guess the decision you have to make now, are we going to just make sure we stop them from scoring another touchdown? Because I guess that's what you, you, you're banking on. If they can hold them to a field goal, it's still a one-score game. And maybe that's the thinking for ECU. Movement right side of the line will cost the Bearcats five. It's Will Stern. Number 64 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Junior from here in Cincinnati. That's the last thing you want to do if you're a Bearcat. And if you want to see Tommy Tupperville get mad, have another one of those. First down, Teon Green. Runs into Demetri McGill and Tommy Green with the carry. And a wall of white jerseys. And another timeout called by Scotty Montgomery. Last play stop in second half for the Pirates. Still a one-score game here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Our Auto Trader Player of the Game, Gunnar Keel, his first start in 329 days, 10th career, 300-plus passing yard effort. Some ups, some downs. Bottom line, back in the lineup and hoping to lead Cincinnati to a winner. And open to lead them, more importantly, to Bowman. That pass to DJ Dowdy, a guy who hadn't been involved, got Khalil Lewis involved. He had a pretty good combination with Devin Gray most of the night. But it was a big play to Lewis. Some double moves. They set some things up, came back to Lewis on a quick hitter when they had a substitution change for ECU. He's been on point most of the night. He's let the game come to him. I think earlier in the game, we had a report from Melanie talking about short to long. That's never really been Gunner Kill's DNA. It's always been longer to short. Tonight, he's taking what the defense has given him. Second down, no timeouts left. Lewis adds to his total and wisely avoids the sideline. Gets to about the 32. Well, you don't want to give him that much room. I don't understand that. You're outside and you're giving that much room. And I think me and you talked about this last year, and, and I'll show it to you here if we get another look at it. You, you, you cannot give room out here on third and five, and the game's on the line. And, and these guys are five, six, seven yards off. I tell you what, from what I've seen from Kill, he's just going to take another shot, stand up, throw it to him, and get the first down. So you got to get up in their face. Play the game coming right here. East Carolina needs a stop. Force potentially a long field goal attempt or a decision for Tommy Tuberville. Is that room again? Bearcats hope to convert here. Keel, middle of the pressure. Deep ball, Lewis. Open. 
Touchdown, Cincinnati. Cody Lewis. Three touchdown catches today. Josh Pasley has the PAT. And Gunnar Keel has four touchdown passes tonight. Three to Khalil Lewis, a career high. Well, I mean, they're just going to run a corner route, but look at the room that he's giving him. I mean, you're out here one-on-one, -on -one and you're, you're really giving him a chance. And look at the way the placement of the ball by Kill. I mean, that was an excellent throw. You're going to get a better look at it right here. Watch him throw the ball, anticipate him coming out of the break. I mean, you can't lead a receiver any better. That's an NFL-like throw, and that's why NFL scouts, <laughs> believe me, they're, they're watching him, and they're continuing to watch Gunnar Kill, and you can see the emotion. I think he's just happy to be playing football for the Bearcats again. Ryan Jones, the kickoff for the Bearcats. Zach Taylor, new offensive coordinator here in Cincinnati, and the former intern OC with the Miami Dolphins. At the end of last season, former star quarterback at Nebraska, Big 12 Player of the Year. It is a remarkable story. And I'm sure when Cincinnati fans think about this game, Corey, they're going to say, well, yeah, why did it take so long to get him in the lineup? But as the coach has explained to us, and Melanie has talked about, he did not have a good feel for the offense and was beaten out by two other quarterbacks. Directional kick there for Ryan Jones. <laughs> And he's also been hurt a lot. And, and he's been hurt a lot. And, and he's had interception trouble. And he's had off-field problem. Well, but he's back now. But, I mean, in the defense of this staff, I mean, he missed nine days in the spring with the back. And then he had some, you know, shoulder. And all these different injuries come up when they're trying to install a new offense. Number four, the kicking team. The five-yard penalty would be added to where the play ended. First down. For those of you tuning in for the Fresno State-Utah State game, you'll be able to find that online at cbssports.com slash live as soon as it kicks off. And we'll get you out there to Logan immediately after the conclusion of this game. Announcers standing by, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, and Jenny Dell. So get us all set. So Fresno State-Utah State in the Mountain West. Here's Nelson. Throws on first down. Intercepted. Tyrell Gilbert has the pick for Cincinnati. And the run back inside the 20. That should seal the deal for the Bearcats in their first conference win of the season. There is a flag down. Well, you, you, you've got them standing back, and they're just playing a three deep zone with five men underneath so That's eight drop back over. personal foul with the late hit out of bounds number 13 of the intercepting team the 15 yard penalty will be enforced from where the play ended you can hear the first down the call in the back but you can see gilbert with an excellent break whenever you've got that type of underneath coverage day five underneath they're going to extend the zone so they, they make you have a, a smaller window and it gives those deeper players a chance to break on the ball you can see Gilbert, who has running back like skills after the catch. You know, you can see him just kind of bait him into that throw. Penalties on Grant Coleman on the late hit, 13 in the red jersey. And it wasn't on Nelson there. Well, yeah, it was. It was on Nelson after Coleman ran him over and was going to celebrate there with Gilbert. Gilbert, the sophomore, Corey's got his third pick of the year. If you're going to go make the tackle or attempt to, you didn't really try to go make the tackle. Don't just wallow out of bounds. That's like standing around the pile. And those unfortunate hits happen. If you're a quarterback, you got to protect yourself. And that's the key for Nelson moving forward. Two touchdowns, two picks. Philip Nelson in the game tonight. And East Carolina's about to lose its fifth straight. And Cincinnati and Gunnar Keel go in the victory formation. There's the knee. 
So we asked Governor Keel yesterday in our meeting with him, what's your top memory of your time as quarterback at Cincinnati? I was surprised. He went back to 2014, a 50-20 loss in Columbus against Ohio State. He yeah, threw four touchdowns, right. yeah. but a 50-28 loss. I would imagine this first start in 11 months creates a new favorite memory for Gunnar Keel. Well, you'd hope so. I mean, you'd hope that the favorite moment is followed with a W <laughs> in front of win because uh, I can't think of any loss in my career as one of my favorite moments. <laughs> and I don't care what I did in the game. A loss is a loss. 23 for 39, 348 passing yards, four touchdowns, no picks, and that means Cincinnati will win its first league game of the season. Yeah. East Carolina will lose its fifth straight. The Pirates start off the year with wins over Western Carolina and NC State from the ACC and have not won since. Five in a row now for Scotty Montgomery in year one in Greenville. Temple beat USF last night to make the East very interesting. And UCF beat UConn earlier today in East Hartford. SMU is still hanging on, trying to upset number 11 Houston and send the Cougars to their second loss of the year. I don't think there's anything for Philip Nelson to be disappointed about. Uh, and I don't think this ECU football team should be disappointed. Uh, I thought they had some questionable calls. I mean, you take back that kick, the interception from Corey Sargent, it, that, that turned this game around. When, when they had the questionable call that took back the interception, when they were starting to get some momentum, and everything kind of changed after that call. Fresno State, Utah State game underway. Now available at cbssports.com slash live. We'll get you out to Logan, Utah. As soon as this game is over. Heading out to the Mountain West. After our American Conference action tonight. Earlier today, you saw North Texas beat Army. Open up the day and then Navy another huge win. Beat Memphis in the American Conference West. And now Navy with a potentially another loss to Houston. They are losing, by the way, 38-14 late. Timeout called by Cincinnati here. Well, that game's to over. SMU. That's basically over. That means yeah. Houston will have its second loss. Now Western Michigan, Boise State are the top two teams you're thinking about for the New Year's Six playoff berth for the group of five. Navy's in the conversation. Well, I think it eliminates Louisville because now Louisville's playing the Houston two-loss team. And that's the only other real game of significance that could have brought their overall pitcher back. Although the NC State win today was impressive. Uh, I, I'm of the belief that right now Navy's still a factor. I, I definitely believe in the Western Michigan and Boise State and what they're doing. Uh, but you're right, Houston's definitely eliminated. And, and I tell you, a team to watch in this American Conference is Temple. And Cincinnati's got to go play them next week. We'll see them next week. About to be the sixth straight win for the Bearcats and Tommy Tuberville head to head with East Carolina. He'll be 3 0 as head coach against the Pirates. Fresno State, Utah State's coming up. I think that'll be a good game next week, though. I think Gunner Kill getting back in the lineup, having an outstanding evening. Uh, it means something. Kill's throwing here and loss out of bounds on fourth and 17. Final and remember last year those interceptions by Gunnar Kill against oh, Temple right down in the, the red zone enabled Temple to come out on top 34 26 against this Cincinnati team and sent him on a little bit of a downward spiral just a bit. So I'm sure Kill will want to have a better performance in the upcoming game. Gunnar Kill did not meet with the media all week. It broke on a website. Earlier this week, Thursday, the Gunner would be the starter. So I imagine that post-game press conference, lots of miles with Gunner Keel and the local media here in Cincinnati. Summer's the catch in the final moments. Stop by Aaron Wilson as we come through there for James Summers. He's really had a nice night. He's run for 95 yards. Good football third catch of the night. He really is. And that's it. Whistles means the game has ended. 31-19 is the final score for Corey Chavis, Melanie Collins, and our entire CBS Sports Network crew. It's Dave Ryan saying so long. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now it's in here, Logan, Utah, Fresno State, Utah State, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell.